Talk Radio. You're in to all things music. I'm not sober by any means. I was just under control. There were scary, scary moments. With me, it was more uh, depression um, back in the day. Uh, you know, seven, eight, nine years ago, maybe even longer. I don't even remember because it's. I was honestly, I was on so many prescription drugs that I, I that whole couple years of my life is just is a complete black hole. I don't remember most of it. Um, but yeah, in my mid to late twenties, I, I went into a, just a spiral. Uh, it, it's, it, I snapped out of it somehow. My family's unbelievable and they pulled me out of it. And then I met my wife and she, you know, kind of brought me to the promised land. Come journey with us through the rhythm of the music business with your host, Jackie Bertoni. Everybody, welcome to Jackie's Groove. This is Jackie Bertoni, and you're brought to you by the Intertalk Radio Network. You're into all things music. You guys, can I tell you something? I'm really stepping out of my wheelhouse today, and I've got some serious balls to do this. The gentleman that I've got coming on the show today, not only is he an accomplished and an emerging new artist with an amazing voice, man, that blows me out of the water, and you will be more educated on Mr. Matt Kusan as we get going on more. Uh, it's a beautiful Wednesday, May the 3rd two days before this gentleman's new album drops, called Only Human. We're going to talk a lot more of that in detail, man. And for the millions of people all over the world that are checking this out, I want everybody to welcome with open arms and open ears to my show, Mr. Matt Cusson. Matt, welcome, brother boy. Jackie, thank you so much for having me, brother. I appreciate it. And the kind words. Thank you very much. I oh, hope uh, people yeah. don't think I suck. No, man. You know, And you and I have been talking about this for the last month, so it worked out perfectly. We were going to have it on earlier, but you said, you know what? It makes a lot more sense to keep it Right before the uh, the release of the album, which is coming out on Absolutely. Friday, but Friday on iTunes album, and man. Amazon and all that, yeah, yeah, man, yeah. Let's talk about it. It's uh, it's uh, I don't it's 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 that, that question. I never know how to explain it because it's really just an all over the place kind of record. It's got a little bit of everything. It's fourteen tunes, which people said I was crazy for in a world of uh, where indie artists are just right. releasing EP after EP and single after single. And uh, it's it's no one genre. It's very it's a very genreless album. Um, and I've been working on it for a good few years now. And uh, it's been man eight nine years since my first record, so it's long overdue. And I'm very excited yeah. about it. And it cost a lot of money to put these things out, so uh, I'm excited about it, man. And you hear that, kids out there listening? It's cost a lot of money, so we need to recoup some of this mm. money, actually most of the money, and put them in a profit situation. On this new yes. tune called uh, new album called Only Human. Hey Matt, let me just step back for one quick second because we're going to spend a lot of time on this. But let's talk mm-hmm. about your uh, let's talk about your your beginning years, man. You were born and raised in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Yeah, in the Berkshires of Western Mass, about two hours north of New York City and two hours west of Boston. And a graduate of St. Joseph High School. My God. <laughs> Yeah, we uh, we just uh, we just closed the school down uh, the other day. Unfortunately, it was a little private school, and um, uh, I guess they were the, the funds were lacking or whatever happened. And I sang uh, a couple tunes at their closing kind of gala that they had for a bunch of alumni. It was actually kind of sad, but it was it was nice yeah. to see a lot of people that I haven't seen in a few years. You know, Matt, and also too, I'm just you know doing a little background, which I don't like to do a lot about. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of, I should say, but um, you have joined the ranks of so many people that are on Jackie's groove that are an alumni mm-hmm. of Berkeley School of Music in Boston. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. And, and uh, it was very cool. I read up the fact that your, uh, your constituents in there, and your, uh, I don't know if it was the same grade, 
Uh, but you mm-hmm. uh, hung out with John Mayer and, and Ryan Leslie. You want to talk about that in a little more detail? Yeah, John Mayer was, uh, he's, he's a little older than I am, but uh, when he, he had dropped out, but it was always around the school and always hanging out in Boston and right. uh, had friends, a lot of mutual friends that were um, uh, in my class that, and a little older than me. And uh, mm-hmm. he was always at the school, just playing and hanging and writing and and I'll never forget when he said, you got to check out this new song I wrote. And he played No Such Thing, which went on to be, you know, a top 10 hit. So it was pretty awesome. And he, he's one of my favorite songwriters, man. I, I love that guy. And uh, it, was, it was awesome to have those, those early moments with him. And Ryan Leslie. You know, and, go ahead. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 no. Go ahead. I was just looking over some notes here. So go on with Ryan. Yeah, yeah. Ryan, uh, we were pretty tight. He was at Harvard. Uh, he's a smart, smart dude. And uh, No doubt. He and I and a few other people were, were a clique for a little while, and we did a lot of writing together. I actually put out a three-song demo when I was 18 that he rapped on, um, and really? I couldn't find that if you asked me to, but um, it may be on YouTube or something. But yeah, it was, it's, uh, we were pretty tight back in the day. I haven't talked to him in a, in a little while, but I know he's doing great things. Yeah, and also, too, <clears throat> so when you... Uh... When you were raised in that situation too, and especially Catholic, because I'm a former altar boy myself, untouched, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah. I'm proud to say that it's Saint Gregory <laughs> the Great. Um, you know, with that said, you know, now you do <clears throat> now you do have two uh, siblings, brother and a sister. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yep, both older, uh, ten and twelve years older. Are they musicians? They're not, but they uh, definitely have it in them. My brother. Uh, played a lot of piano and, and my sister played flute and she sang and taught me how to sing harmony when I was like five, six years old, uh, maybe even younger. And there was a lot of, um, they just, my, my whole family, I was like a little melting pot since I'm so much younger than everybody else. My brother right. liked the singer songwriter stuff, the Billy Joel, the Elton John. My sister liked the funk stuff like Stevie Wonder and Earth, Wind and Fire. Mm-hmm. My dad liked jazz and like the James Taylor type stuff. And my mom liked classical so I just kind of, it kind of all wow. fell on me and I ended up liking everything. And uh, they're not musicians. Uh, my brother and sister are not musicians, but they, they, they got it in them for sure. Matthew, I'm walking <laughs> down the streets of, uh, of Pittsfield and I'm walking mm-hmm. down your neighborhood. It's up, <clears> I just <throat> kind of use this as a little picture here. I knock on your okay. front door. Matt opens the mm-hmm. door, gives me a, a fist bump or what do you want to do it? A big hug. Mm-hmm. What mm-hmm. am I going to be hearing through the music, uh, through the speakers at the Kusan household at that time? How old am I? Am I a kid? My young, your kid, yes. I would. Uh, well, if there wasn't a a sports game on that wasn't blaring through the television, uh, right. you're gonna hear. Uh, my dad liked a lot of jazz stuff. He likes a lot of the. He loves the Joe samples and the four mm-hmm. plays, and he also. But he also he he had his stereo that we weren't allowed to touch, so he kind of controlled the, the music in the uh, in the in the house. So, but he also there was a lot of James Taylor playing, a lot of Paul Simon. Uh, but if you were to come between nine and five, you would hear my mother teaching piano lessons, uh, oh, in the basement. Cool. Yeah. So it, it, there was always music happening no matter what time or when. You know, you know, it blows me out of the water, Matt. I, you're, you're labeled, at least that's what I'm reading online. You're labeled a contemporary jazz artist. Do you believe in that title? No, God, no. That was, uh, no. nothing against contemporary jazz. Well, I love it. Um, I, when mm-hmm. I put my first record out. Uh, it got picked up by uh, a record label, and that's how they kind of marketed it. And uh, maybe one or two songs on there could pass as that, right. but it's much more of a I, – I, I never know what to call it. It's definitely – you know, it can, it can go in R&B. It could go in pop. It could go in – you know, some of the songs could go in folk. Um, it can definitely – some of the songs, especially on that first record, could go in jazz. But um, I am not – yeah, yeah, you can't – the whole as a whole, it's definitely not a contemporary jazz record. And uh, – you know, but that's that's not to say that I may not do that in the future. I, I'm the kind of guy I want to do it all. But and whatever they label me, they label me because when they hear the record, they'll be like, hey. "Oh, I get it. Maybe he's not that." And see, and that's where I was blown away because I was introduced to you mm-hmm. by the CEO of our our network, Florentino Buenaventura, and he says, "We got to okay. get this guy on." And then, of course, I put on the music, <clears throat> and I became an instant fan. In fact, I messaged you oh, thanks, oh, probably about thirty days ago. And yep. and for those of the fans all over the world, for Matt. Uh, Kusan, I want you guys to check it out because just when you think you've got his music figured out, his style and <laughs> genre, he goes in a completely different trajectory, which makes it great, which shows that his voice is somewhat of a chameleon. You know, of all the people that we've had here on Jackie's Groove, 
amazing vocalist. You know, the the who's who. I mean, Matt, I just had the pleasure three weeks ago with Ann Wilson from Heart. No wow. one's got a voice like that. Now, you know, oh my and that god, was, no. um, yeah. Yeah, that that was magic, man. And you know, and so mm-hmm. listening to this stuff, you know, I'm going to tell, and we're going we're to go through your songs and the snippets and so on. But I'm also going to mm-hmm. bring a song on that I've played for a lot of my. I'm not a parent. You're not a parent. Um, mm-hmm. But there's a song you wrote or you played called "Once Upon a Time," and I've yeah. had a lot of my my dear friends, males, over here to the studio, and mm-hmm. they have new babies. And I yeah. said, "Hey, man, I want you to check this out. I have an artist coming on. His name is Matt Cousin. He's coming on in about three weeks." Take a listen to this song. And so a friend of mine, Simon, mm-hmm. has two little baby girls. And oh, he's sitting, literally perfect. Matthew, he, yeah, he's sitting in front of me in the studio, and we're listening to the songs. Mm-hmm. And as soon as it said, I think the word is um, about your uh, uh, princess gown to a wedding gown. Oh, yeah. You know, as, yeah. I mean, yeah. I looked at him, and his mm-hmm. eyes were welled up with tears, man. And and That's I get more awesome. I get more of a re- yeah I get more response from my male friends that are parents versus the girls because I'm gonna be yeah, honest with kinda, you brother it kind of comes from that sense uh, yeah that I'm not gonna male, smoke up your ass blow it I need it yeah well here's the blow I mean it's like so funny in fact <laughs> Paul was talking and Florentino was talking and even Megan my producer. Any girl mm-hmm. that's got blood running through their veins, it's like the, the feedback that we got online, we were cracking up. And we're talking about girls <laughs> from the early 20s up to the Cougars wanting to know, Jackie, are you going to have him in the studio? I'm like, Jesus Christ, really, people? Oh, and so that's the fact hilarious. That is, yeah, so I get the response from the guys crying over mm-hmm. the words. I get the girls looking at your face first and then listening to the music. Oh, he can sing. And so that's, that's the... That's um, funny. So, so, you know, and I want to talk about this because it's really cool. You know, we talked about, you know, what we're going to be listening to, what you listen to in the in the Kusan household. Mm-hmm. Now, were you first considered a singer or a pianist? Um, I don't really know. I always sang. Um, but actually, when I sat down at the piano when I was about six or seven and started playing um, mm-hmm. Ribbon in the Sky by Stevie Wonder. And my parents were like, how did you how did you learn that? And, you know, I'm an ear player. So it kind of it kind of was a little easier to me at a younger age mm-hmm. uh, than going through your scales and, and reading book one and all that. But um, I, I it's hard. I, I don't it's I, don't, I hate picking one because it's it's I like it all. man. Right. I like singing. I like playing. I, I play a little bit of guitar. I love doing that. Um, I think first was it might have been piano first, even though I always sang. So it's hard. It's hard to tell. And that's at the age of that's six years old. That's a terrible I, answer to the question. I'm sorry. I didn't, no, didn't answer that all. question not, at all. <laughs> no, not at all, Matt. Because, you know, I ask a lot of the musicians out there, especially um, uh, parents of children mm-hmm. um, who want yeah. to shove an instrument down their child's uh, throat. And I say doesn't this always on a regular work that basis. Way. No, it doesn't mm-hmm. work that way. I say take your child to a music store. Let the, music inst- let the instrument call the child. Right. And, right. you know, and the bottom line is I said it also, and I say this from – from my heart, if your child doesn't have any talent, there's mm-hmm. not a musician, there's not a, there's not education, there's not teachers out there that can turn that around. So right. you know, do, exactly. don't, don't be let down with that. You know, and so the musical influence and the people that you influenced all your life, you know, or mm-hmm. your professional life, who would you say really was your main influence? And we're going to get going on uh, the gentleman who discovered you, but talk about mm-hmm. one, somebody who you listen to that just to this day still blows you out of the water. Um. Man, there's a lot. If I had to pick, I mean, when I discovered mm-hmm. Stevie Wonder when I was maybe 10 or 11, you know, I played Ribbon in the Sky when I was young, but I really started to dive into all his records. That right. kind of changed my life. I, I, that's when I decided that I, I want to be this guy. I want to do what this guy's doing. Because talk about different styles. He's he's got all he's right. all over the map as well. Um, mm-hmm. But guys like him, James Taylor, who's still putting out incredible music, an album that he put out last Absolutely. year just blows me away. Uh, those guys really, they, they, they got me when I at a, at a very young age. And I was that kid that would go to all the record store, whatever record store I could find and, and grab mm-hmm. anything, any CD, if they were featured on something and I would, I would buy it. And, uh, the, the early on, those two really kind of shaped what I was doing. And then, yeah, uh, Brian McKnight, when I was about, uh, I think I first heard one last cry when I was nine uh-huh. or so. And it went from there. Speaking of Brian, um, just going over itself, which is pretty amazing, with someone that you really, really looked up to as a great singer, basically, mm-hmm. would you agree the fact that Brian was really the one who discovered Matt Cousin in 2000? Um, 
It was part of it. Uh, it definitely, you know, when I went to Berkeley, uh, I was there for a year before he, he pulled me out of school right. to do some, uh, to do some recording and some touring. But I performed before him, I performed with James Taylor's brother Livingston a lot and I still continue Amazing. to perform with him. Um, and he's incredible as far as stage performance and songwriting. And, and he, he's incredible. He, he is just a bevy of knowledge that I, that, I mm-hmm. continue to soak up. And every time I see him, I learn something new. I'm um, actually, I just, you know, he just called me uh, a couple hours ago. We're doing a couple of shows in Martha's Vineyard in Nantucket in a couple months. But, um, he, he was, he the, was kind of first. And then Brian McKnight put me on a more really into that R and B world, which was fantastic. You know, it's when you talk about Livingston, you, I'm going back for a second. I mean, that apple mm-hmm. did not fall too far from the tree, did it? I mean, it comes down no. to his, uh, his father's voice. I mean, to this day, when James Taylor starts to sing, you know, if it's Mexico or Shower mm-hmm. oh. or whatever it may oh, be, man. His, yeah. his voice is like, I, I compare his voice, maybe a good uh, comparison, maybe not, but I compare his pureness of his voice to a Karen Carpenter style. Absolutely. You know, it's, 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 yeah, it's a makes re- you feel like relaxed, everything's okay. That's it. That's it. Yeah. And that's the way I yeah. feel about your songs also, because, you know, the, the tune that you came up with, you covered a Brian tune, a Brian McKnight tune mm-hmm. on your, uh, on your, I think it was an uh, album about eight years ago. Yeah. Forever ago. That's right. Right. And uh, what yeah. prompted you to do that song? Other than that, I mean, that is, those, that song tears on my heartstrings because basically it's just telling <laughs> you, I want to give you the world, man, but I can only afford a city. Yeah. You know, and, and, and the fact that the matter Especially coming you know, from musicians. Absolutely. And how long have you been married? Uh, we just did four years. Girls, I said the word married. And I'm going on 34 years. <laughs> and so when there's... When oh, there's, God bless you. Yeah, man. And when there's music out there, man, that gets you, that really, really mm-hmm. brings you into the fold of things. Um, I love Brian McKnight because Brian McKnight has always been considered um, almost compared vocal-wise. Mm-hmm. I hear it to a certain level. Um, of my yeah. uh, good friend Michael McDonald, they had that same kind of oh, that, God, yeah. that that lower yeah. lower uh, lower range. Um, mm-hmm, absolutely. So based upon that itself, when you would open up for Brian, when you'd be touring with Brian, mm-hmm. was it a full show that you were doing? Was it uh, were you joining him on stage? I would do. It, it was it was different throughout the years, but when we started, I was doing a couple songs to open and then introducing him, and then I would go back to my little keyboard world and play keys and sing background for him. And then that turned into, then we started doing a uh, still in love as a duet, mm. um, which was incredible. Uh, talk about intimidating, but it was awesome. And, um, from there it, it, it changed a lot. Um, and, uh, but that's how it started with, with, with a couple with a duet, with a couple tunes and some background singing and some keys. Yeah. Let's, and let's delve in more into that because I got that little light flashing scene that we're coming out of, Segment number one and segment number two. Do you see how fast this goes, my friend? I mean, this is That's a, crazy. It's it, it's really <laughs> crazy, and, and we haven't even got anywhere near this. So I want everybody to sit back and enjoy this interview with Matt Cousin on Jackie's Groove. Guys, this is Jackie Bertoni. We're brought to you by the Inner Talk Radio Network. You're into all things music. And we're celebrating the uh, the eve eve of the release of Matt's new album called mm-hmm. Only Human. We'll talk more about that in the tracks. 14 people support this man. Mm-hmm. Guys, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back on segment number two. Stay tuned. You don't want to miss a thing. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on Intertalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. 
I'm Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on Intertalk Radio. Each week, I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear. Make this your vinyl night. I'm John J.R. Robinson, and every week, music creation comes alive through stories, experiences, and sounds when vinyl records filled our hearts and minds. My friends and I share our tips and techniques used in creation of iconic tracks for recording artists such as Michael Jackson, Eric Clapton, Quincy Jones, and Steve Winwood, to name a few. Vinyl has emerged hot, and the soul of vinyl defines art and passion, which burns deepest at night. Tune in every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on entertalkradio.com. Come journey with us through the rhythm of the music business with your host, Jackie Bertoni. Jackie's Groove, segment number two. This is Jackie Bertoni with my in-studio guest today, Mr. Matt Cousin. Let me just tell you guys, that's as naked and as raw as you're going to get out there, man. Uh, you know, There's one word, actually uh, two words, or maybe one word, that I'm sure is not in Matthew's uh, vocabulary, and that, it's called auto-tune, kids. Um, <laughs> it's a situation, is, if you can't sing, man, face up to it. Matthew, that, I called you Matthew like you're my nephew. Matt, that's all right, that's, that's all right. That song. That song, let's talk about the genesis of that tune, please. Yeah, that song, well, I, I wish I wrote that one. That's a um, an old, old John Mayer song. I kind of did that as a, as a, um, if, it's just a, it's a brilliantly written song to me. Uh, lyrically, everything. I, I think it's just, back then when I recorded it, it was, it was one of my, uh, one of my favorites. And, and when you say raw, I, that, I think that was one or two takes. I just kind of sat, played it and mm. sang it. And that was that. You know, and, and Matthew, what what does it take for you? How do you prep before you go into a studio? Are you a think tank, or do you go in, sit down? Oh, I hate to use this term, and I love to use the term. When you go ahead and you roll tape, and um, you know, when you're listening to yourself singing, are you a Pro Tools guy? Or are you still the old school where you're comfortable behind an SSL Neve board? I I, I can find my way around those. I'm I'm much more of a um a Pro Tools Logic guy uh, these days, right. especially when I'm producing for me or other artists. Um, right. No, no real, you know, process really. It, it, it's just, it's a, it's a mind thing with me. All right. I'm singing tonight. I got to get my voice right. Got to make sure there's a little right. thing of whiskey in the vocal booth and then I'm good to go. Hopefully. Now, are you employing live musicians on your tunes itself or um, share with the oh, audience yeah. itself? What's the process when it comes to hiring the yo cats now that you're out mm-hmm. of LA and you're in, you know, and you're in another YoCat area called New York, you've got the you've mm-hmm. got the virtual plethora of great players. Who do you reach for in the way of bass, drums, uh, and additional keyboards, etc.? Share with us. I got a. Um, it, it really it, it's it's who I hear on each tune. There's a couple guys I go to all the time. My friend Jack DeBow, who plays drums for Emily King, uh, nice. and a bunch of other people, Michelle and Deglio Cello. Uh, you know, the list goes on and on. He is uh, just a phenomenal musician, and and I like a I like instrument instrumentalists that play the song and and, and not just play their instrument. Right. And he's perfect for that. And he uh, so he's he's a goat. He played on man probably ninety five percent of the record. Uh, my friend, I had two bass players uh, mainly on the record, uh, three actually, but two uh, I go to all the time. My friend Chris Laughlin, who plays uh, for Brian McKnight. 
my friend Johnny Morrow, who is a bi-coastal cat and plays all over the place with, with a ton of people. Um, Zane Carney's an L.A. cat who was John Mayer's guitar player for a long time. He's on a blues tune um, that I did. I don't know, man. It, I, I like to – it's all about networking, making friends, and, and vibing together. And, and that sounds so Definitely. corny, but it's true. It really yeah. is, man. And, and, when I, and when I'm on a certain tune, like there's, there's a bluegrass song on this next record. And there's this blues player in wow. Woodstock, New York, that I was like, I got to get this dude on it. He's a friend I went to Berkeley with, and he destroyed the tune. Like, it's he killed it. It sounds incredible. So it's it's mainly type, style, production. It depends. And that's a cool situation you bring. Cause I, and again, I'm going to ask a question because we are musicians to musicians itself. Is mm-hmm. Matt Cousin an easy guy to work with in the studio? Are you a tyrant? Are you a prick? Do you have your thumb no. down on people? Do you? <laughs> When you're, because uh-uh. I, I explained to a lot of, I explained to a lot of young guys that you know, with the again, the, there's that term again, plethora of musicians that are available in L.A. where I record, Chicago where I do a mm-hmm. lot of recording. Producers mm-hmm. like, even though they have a percussionist living next door to them, someone had asked me, they yeah. said, well, you know, when he's got all these available people, why are they using you? And I mean, they're using you because if you come with a great bio. And I said, right. I understand something. When you are worth uh, working with a great entertainer, a great musician, a great mm-hmm. vocalist. The producer mm-hmm. likes to hire the people that he knows he's going to get the most out of. He's right. not going to have right. to sit there and, especially with Pro Tools and Logic and so on and, and all this Skype crap, um, that you right. don't have to sit there and know that, you know, what's like. And now myself, personally speaking, when I record, I give the producer three times as much as he's asked for. And then he can choose oh, what yeah. he wants to use. Me too. And so on. Now, and so mm-hmm. that's the question. So when you're on there, you're hiring the musicians doing your thing. Do you and, mm-hmm. and the quality of players that are on your on your music, but do you still mm-hmm. find it um, to a situation where if you're not liking what you're hearing 100 percent, you don't have a problem going to them and telling, hey, man, I wanted to hear it this way. You have to, especially if you're paying them and it's harder, harder yeah. into money. Um, mm-hmm. There's been a couple of times where I've gotten uh, a couple of takes from people and I'm like, you know what, can, can we try this, this and this? But, man, I've worked with both kinds of producers. And for me, uh, if the. I I am not a confrontational person. I cannot. I'm the kind of guy that if there's a hair in my soup, I'll eat my way around it. I can't send it back. I just can't. I I, I never been able to do that. Um, So I will tell you in musical terms, Hey, let's try this, try this, try this. I usually like to pick musicians that I know are going to either kill it or if they didn't do what I wanted, I could say, Hey, can we do it this way? And they'll kill that. Um, uh, I'm producing a record now for a friend of mine, and we got uh, Louis Conti, Louise Conti, and Mike Landau, and all these killer, killer musicians. I barely have to tell them what to do. I just say, "Hey, this is how I think of it. Go!" And uh, Mike Landau just sent me 13 tracks on one tune. He's like, "Yeah, man, bounce in between." And I'm like, "Nope, I'm gonna just press play because these are 13 guitar tracks that I want to hear every little thing you did. Like it was perfect. So he makes the production job a lot easier." But, uh, Absolutely, and that's yeah, so man. cool that you just mentioned that because you mentioned Luis. I just talked to Luis uh, about a week ago. He's out right now with this gentleman called Phil Collins. Yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and the guy yeah, I'm producing back is out with him too. Yeah, man, and I've got coming on the show. Hopefully, within the next couple of weeks, if we can get the scheduling going, I've got Leland mm-hmm. Sklar. Uh, Leland, of course, one of the greatest oh, my bassists, God, yeah. the most the most recorded bassist in the history of music. Man, that's uh, uh it's not um, bad. That's quite a feat. No, and then of course mm-hmm. I've had uh, you know uh, John J. R. <clears throat> Robinson, the most recorded drummer in the history of music. And I've got coming Crazy. on soon my mentor, Palinio da Costa, the most recorded percussionist in the history of music. So we're Crazy. breaking down, man. We're, we're doing things different here, man. We're coming up. Yeah, man. And I've got coming up, if I can brag, and yes, I'm going to brag. Please. I've got Steve Smith. i got Steve Smith from Journey coming on in a couple of weeks. Oh, wow. Uh, currently on I just met that fact, dude. He's a, a great guy. He's amazing. And they're at a residency right now at the Hard Rock. Uh, the joint okay. in Las Vegas, and uh, mm-hmm. so Monday's other days off, which that works out perfectly. So that'll be the actually the fourth group that Jackie's Groove hosts. That is members of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and we're pretty pretty stoked about that. You know, and um, so yeah. So with with that going back to uh, Matthew, if you weren't playing slash singing, mm-hmm. what would you be doing instrumental wise? What would you be playing? Uh, if I if I wasn't playing or or if I wasn't singing, what would I be playing? If you weren't singing. Yeah, and if you weren't playing uh, piano or guitar, what would you? What's your next instrument of choice? I started on drums when I was a kid. Um, really? I think I was about nine nine years old or something. Yeah, after the piano, after I learned a couple of things on the piano, I wanted to do something else, so I started on drums. My parents got me a kit, and that lasted about mm, a year or two. Uh, 
I love the bass, man. I would probably try to pick up the bass. Uh, there's nothing like agree. filling out a song with an incredible bass player. Um, Absolutely. So that would probably be my, my next go to. You know, and I, I look over these things. I'm looking at some of these notes itself. You know, the 2000 when you went out with when Brian, you joined him. You actually went on tour with him in 2004. Strike that. Um, 2009, but you were out with Christina Aguilar in 2004 on the yeah. Exposed tour. I've got mm-hmm. some stories, my brother, that will make your face red because one of my closest friends, mm-hmm. his name is Ramon Islas, um, the percussionist mm-hmm. with Christina yeah. Aguilar, Backstreet Boys, uh, uh, yep. 90, 98 Degrees. Oh, I yeah. I got to tell you something. Did you, did you get a chance to chop it up with her? Because I'm going to be honest with you guys, it's all about keeping it real here on Jackie's Groove. I hear Christina is the quintessential diva slash bitch. Did you have a run in with this girl at all? <laughs> so this, this tour ended before it started. Unfortunately, we rehearsed for a long time, a, several, a, 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 well over a month, a lot of weeks of singing the same song and stuff. Um, she came in and we rehearsed with her for about a week. And then they came in and said, uh, the tour's canceled because she blew out a vocal cord. Um, we don't know if that's true, but so the tour itself, it never actually happened. Um, but I did get to sing with her a bunch and she did a lap quick lap dance on me during lady marmalade, which was fantastic. Um, I didn't get to chop it up with her really as much as I would. Um, she seemed sweet when I, the, the couple of small exchanges we had. So I don't, I don't know her as well as I, I, uh, right. as other people may. Well, she mellowed with age, you know, especially after having a baby and so on, but Ray mm-hmm. shared her story with us, man. I got to tell you, it's because Christina, is, I mean, <clears throat> physically, she's a beautiful woman. Bottom line is, then, of course, she could be the ugliest woman, but her voice, when she sings, it's, there's no, oh, like, there's, you know, unlike anything at all. Mm-hmm. I, yep. um, uh, Ray was kind of walking down there at Staples Center, and they mm-hmm. were kind of, he was taking a little bit of a break, and he was walking around and kind of just vibing on about, here's where Kobe's playing, here's where Shaq was at, and so on. Then all of a mm-hmm. sudden, he heard these girls kind of giggling it up and laughing and so on. So he's walking mm-hmm. and is getting ready to go out and have a cigar. And all of a sudden, through the dressing room, runs Christina out with a G-string on and no bra. <clears throat> Lovely. And she looked right at Ray face to face. And she goes, right up here. And he looks up and yeah. she, she goes, <laughs> you saw nothing. Unbelievable. And he, and he goes, all well, right. you got to either walk backwards or turn around. So... He goes, you know, I'm right. paralyzed with fear right now. But, you know, that was like his run in with that situation. And of course, he called <laughs> well, at his least wife he has that story. And, That's fantastic. Exactly. But he called his wife and he said, before it goes out in the uh, paper, let, let me tell you what happened. So uh, right. those are and those are the situations where the fun things on the road that you want to talk about or you can talk about. And speaking of that situation with you being on the road, when you go out on the road, Matt, when you're especially now that you're coming on the cusp of your new album, how much time mm-hmm. do you spend on the road? What's your maximum? Uh, oh, uh, man. Rank? A ton. Um, when I released my first record, I was out on the road for four to five months straight. Um, really? Uh, last uh, Christmas, last uh, November and December, I went on a six week tour with Megan Hiltzie, Um And uh, it, it was nonstop. I love it, man. I love performing. I love being out on the road. I also like coming home to my wife. But uh, it, it's, it's awesome. Like a lot of these uh, CD release shows I'm doing now are a lot of just one offs. Um, just, but I plan on doing something. I might do a West coast thing. I might do a, a, you know, go start in Maine and go all the way down to Florida type thing, but we'll see. And, and I'm going to assume you're playing theater style venues. Uh, mm, depends. Uh, I like to do the smaller singer songwriter type venues. Um, right. with Megan, we, man, with Megan, we were doing Lincoln center and Kennedy center. It was unbelievable. Uh, but, um, most of my stuff is I like to keep it on the smaller side. Selling tickets is, it's stressful to me, to be yeah. honest with you. And it's hard to oh, sell man. as many tickets as, uh, as you'll like these days, but. Matthew, let me ask you a question. How old are you now? 34. All right. So you're, you know, I'm, I'm what, 26, <clears throat> 23 years, your, your senior. Um, I want to mm. talk more about that interest, you know, that the introspect of the music business or the lack thereof, as I do with all my interviews. I want to get your take on what the situation is where you feel it's going because God knows mm-hmm. no one's selling any fucking albums anymore, man. And it's, yeah, uh, I know. It, it, yeah. And it, I want to believe in my heart of hearts that it will come 180 uh, degrees that it was going to come back. And something's got to come back because as I've told everybody over the years, kids, 
You got to go out. In fact, I actually posted this, Matt. I don't know if you saw it. I think I don't know if you responded to it. Last Saturday, I happened mm-hmm. to be uh, watching on Saturday evening uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction 2017. And mm-hmm. it was like, and so I posted because my wife and I are rocking out uh, yeah. you know, to the tunes, you know, to Eddie Vedder and to uh, Journey and so on. And I just mm-hmm. got kind of like this, I got on my little soapbox. I didn't mean to, but I said, mm-hmm. you know, as I sit here on a Saturday night and I'm watching the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame 2017, I said, take note, kids. I said, those people on stage are older than your parents. Yeah. And they're, and they're relevant because they did not make their fame on a thing called YouTube. And right. the reason why right. the music is so good is because there's real fucking musicians playing real mm-hmm. fucking instruments and playing really great tunes, you know, right. and it's, and you, and you go out and you see these like, friends of mine, like the group sticks, my good buddy, of mine, Todd Zuckerman, they're in Kansas city right now. They're still doing 19,000 seat arenas. Oh yeah, you know? definitely. Yeah. So, so with that said, you know, in these last couple of minutes, are you a person that, uh, are you optimistic? Or are you pessimistic of where the industry is going or where it's heading to? I'm I'm optimistic about the uh, opportunities that a lot of people that wouldn't normally get opportunities are now getting. Right. Um, I have friends that have been struggling for years and years, and now they're YouTube sensations, and they're getting all sorts of opportunities and this and that. I'm pessimistic about, I mean, they, they've been saying for 20 years now, it's going to get better, it's going to get better, but <laughs> it's, it's gotten so much worse. And the streaming thing is, is just killing us. Um, People, stop but, stealing fucking music. Stop yeah, stealing it's really music. hurting us. Really hurting us big time. Um, like I, the, with the amount of money I spent on this record, you know, a lot of us are saying, "Well, we got to figure out how to make it back because it ain't going to be in sales and, and radio play." Um, I am. It, it's it's fifty fifty. I'm pessimistic. I I don't see, you know, if it took ten years for things like Spotify and and Pandora to right. get going. I don't see the model yet for how the sales are going to get back up. I, there's no model that says, okay, well, we're going to make sure we sell it. And if there is, I haven't heard of it. Um, stores are dropping left and right. I just got a call from a local store where I grew up um, who said, hey, man, we got three or CDs left. Uh, unfortunately, we're closing next month. We got, and this was the coolest record store in the Berkshires in Massachusetts. And uh, unfortunately, they just closed. So I don't know yet, man. I think it's great that uh, I, I wish kids would start picking up instruments again because a lot of them are just doing the MIDI thing with an Apple computer. And that's a lot of the stuff that we're hearing on the radio is that. So you know, and, and uh, let's, let's pick, let's, Matthew, let's pick this up because I'm walking out of two going into three. And that, that's a great situation great. because we're all about educating here, man. We want to make sure people know what's real out there. And, and God knows um, uh, Intertalk Radio and Jackie's group, we hope we can you know, make a little dent in getting some of this money back, especially with our popularity worldwide. We're going to do our best mm-hmm. for you, brother, to do what we can and, and also to extend that olive branch. So when you're doing shows, if you want us to help promote those shows in your area, please grab that branch and let us help you out if at all possible. That's right. So with that That's said, right. guys, um, don't go anywhere, man. We're walk- I just, I'm, I'm having such a great time, man, because we're coming out of uh, segment number two and segment number three of a two-hour interview with Mr. Matt Cousson on the eve, eve of his release, um, new release called only human. 14 tracks, people. Spend the money. Don't go anywhere, mm-hmm. Jackie. For Tony Jackie's group, brought to you by Intertalk Radio Network, here into all things music. I don't know if I'm liking this Facebook Live thing because uh, I can't do this. But I did it anyway. So, guys, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after <laughs> a short break. Stay tuned. Hi, this is Tim Dolbear, host of Sound Experience here on Intertalk Radio. And Source Connect by Source Element is the essential tool that we use to link between my studio in Austin, Texas, and the WS radio station in San Diego. Now, with Source Connect, not only can we communicate in real time and with HD audio, but it's synced up and is of a high enough quality that I can use it for real time ADR work, remote recording, and overdubbing. And it even allows me to remotely control a DAW. Source Connect by Source Element, affordable, high quality audio and video connection over the internet for all of your production needs. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on Intertalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. 
Make this your vinyl night. I'm John J.R. Robinson, and every week, music creation comes alive through stories, experiences, and sounds when vinyl records filled our hearts and minds. My friends and I share our tips and techniques used in creation of iconic tracks for recording artists such as Michael Jackson, Eric Clapton, Quincy Jones, and Steve Winwood, to name a few. Vinyl has emerged hot, and the soul of vinyl defines art and passion, which burns deepest at night. Tune in every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on entertalkradio.com. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio, to sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. Hi, this is Tony Lindsay, lead vocalist with Santana, and you're listening to Jackie's Groove with Jackie Bertone. Welcome to Jackie's Groove. Come journey with us through the rhythm of the music business with your host, Jackie Bertone. Everybody. Welcome back to Jackie's Groove, segment number three, the first hour of a two-hour interview with my in-studio guest, Mr. Matt Cousin. And coming up on this coming Friday, May the 5th, you can purchase his new album called Only Human. We're going to talk more about that in length. Uh, welcome back, Matt. Thanks for joining us again, my brother. You know, and, Thank and, you, and man. I, I appreciate to, it. I, I, no, please. I said to you on the break itself, we're going to archive this show. And for you, uh, the people out there that are not... Uh, can't, don't want to listen to us or can't listen to us live because of work and so on, do yourself a favor and us a favor. Um, go on to iTunes or to Google Play and download our easy-to-use and navigate application. Two words, InterTalk, second word, radio, and take Jackie's Groove and the whole InterTalk family on the road with you. Stream it, baby. And that's what we're all about, to keep it real. Now, let's go back to that song we just came up on segment number three. Talk to me yep. about that beautiful tune. That is a song called In My Head. That was the third third single off the um – off the album, I wrote that as cheesy as it sounds. I wrote it for my wife. Uh, I, Nothing cheesy, baby. The, I think the one thing, the theme of this album, even though all the music is different, uh, the theme is 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 pulled in. I think lyrically um, and stylistically uh, about you know a lot of stuff that that I've been going through over in my in my late twenties and bouts mm-hmm. with alcoholism and bouts with I was in a mental home for a little while. And I basically that song is a testimony t- kind of how to, how she kind of saved my life and, and put everything in perspective. You know, and, and I appreciate what you just said just now, man, you, you know, about keeping it real. My dear friend of mine, Jamie Wallum, a uh, drummer mm-hmm. for the group called Tears for Fears, he had said, I had interviewed him a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago, and he said to me, is there anything I can't talk about? I said, no, mm-hmm. man, it's my name's on the show. You're, this is your episode. And he goes, yeah. my sobriety is going on two years right now. And he goes, I almost Amazing. lost everything. I lost my, I lost my, my marriage and so on. Mm-hmm. But, you know, to be sober for two years. And he said, yeah. you mind? I said, brother, if you, can, if you can touch one person out there in recovery, yeah. then you've Absolutely. done your job. So, you know, Absolutely. that situation, I want to ask, I want to ask the people out there too. And people want to know about that. Thank you for being mm-hmm. open with that. And so on. Man, oh, anything. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. I, I had gas, I had gastric bypass surgery nine years ago. I dropped over 200 pounds. You know, oh, and, wow. I'm, and I'm a normal sized guy now, but I'm always going to be a fat man. You know, and yeah. that's, you know, I, I love food. That's the problem about being the quintessential Italian. Food is the greatest. The the, food is the greatest, man. But, you know, when you say about surviving and, and, and uh, yeah. recovering and, and, mm-hmm. and, and doing the proper program to keep yourself on the straight and narrow, are mm-hmm. you considered to be the the Debbie Downer when it comes to being at a party and so on and so forth. How are you 
How do you act? Oh no, I can still party. Situation. I, I can still party. Um, okay. I, 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 I'm, I'm not sober by any means. That's just under control. Um, and I was never that deep in, there were scary, scary moments. Um, Mm -hmm. with me, it was more, uh, depression, um, back in the day, uh, you know, seven, eight, nine years ago, maybe even longer. I don't even remember. Cause it's, I was honestly, I was on so many prescription drugs that I, I, that whole couple years of my life is just, is a complete black hole. I don't remember most of it. Um, but yeah, in my mid to late twenties, I, I went into a, just a spiral, uh, like, and, and I, it was creepy cause I was reading Sylvia Platt poems and I was, uh, just obsessed with Vincent Van Gogh. There's a song about it on the record called, um, who like me. Um, That's dark. That's and I was dark. obsessed with Van Gogh and, and how he died and, 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 and why he painted what and this and that. And it got, it got, you know, it got silly, but it it's it, I snapped out of it somehow and it wasn't because of prescription drugs. Not that I'm, uh, you know, I know those, I know I have a lot of friends go, who went through the same thing that they prescription drugs helped a lot. Uh, mm-hmm. my family's unbelievable and they pulled me out of it. And then I met my wife and she, you know, kind of brought me to the promised land kind of thing when it comes to that kind of stuff. And that's not to say that we'll always have depression. I'll, I'll still, you know, go into a hole for a couple of days, you know, mentally if, if 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 i'm feeling that way yeah and i'll still you know i'll have a couple i know i'm gonna have a couple bad nights drinking but now my wife i don't want to do anything stupid so the drinking thing uh it, it kind of came to a halt mm-hmm. you know i can still have a uh, i can do a bottle of wine within an hour easily but i don't want to put my wife through her dad had a massive addiction problem and still does so it's not anything I want to put her through. So, so in a lot of ways, that tune is about all of that. Do you want to sh- do you want to show your beautiful wife's name? When I say beautiful physically, she's stunning. <laughs> Lisa Licados, and she just actually added the Cusan to her name. So it's Lisa Licados Cusan. She Good girl. is an incredible, incredible person. She's in Boston working today on something. Um, Lisa, so she's you, not here. Lisa, or I would make her join me. If you're listening, baby girl, let me just tell you something, man, because. Your duty of taking on the I do's with your musician and my wife in particular oh, also. Oh, God. Yep. You, God bless you guys. I don't know what the fuck you guys are thinking about. But let me, yeah, yeah. But let me just tell you something here. <laughs> I want to be honest with you. And I say this to everybody else. You know, we in our business, being on the road, as I said it over and over again, blah, 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 that the fact is there's nothing glamorous about being on the road. Then there isn't until the lights go up. And you right. know we can be the, the we can, we can have people blowing smoke up our ass. I personally don't like it. I liked it at one time when I was younger, but you know what? I understand they're doing a job, and that makes sense to me. But the thing right. is, my wife Caprice, or better known as the Leveler, she mm-hmm. just as your wife, she's she's impressed. She knows who she's married to. She knows the talent. But the fact mm-hmm. of the matter is, when I come home. And I've done the coolest things in the industry. I've worked with Michael McDonald. I've worked with the Beach Boys, Brian Wilson, Wilson. When I get home, my name doesn't, that name, that's out in the minute. My name becomes Hey You. Yep. Dog poop needs to be picked up. This needs to be done. Yep. That needs to be done. Does your better half, and I say that word, does your better half, does she keep you grounded? Oh, my God, yeah. 100%. Okay. Uh, the music is fun, but there's nothing like coming home to her. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. You know, and, and we, we started talking about on the, on the second segment, you know, about the, the, the business and how it's changed and so on and the streaming and the Pandora's and the Spotify's and all the other crap mm-hmm. that's out there in the marketplace. And uh, the fact of the matter is, you know, we have mortgages, you know, and my dear friend of mine, uh, Al Demiola and Stanley Clark, they were in tour three months ago in Germany and they were talking backstage and they were talking <coughs> about, you know, their longevity and their, and their, and how they staying relevant in this industry. But I thought mm. something was very prolific, what Al told Stanley. And he said, at our age, we should be wanting to play music, not having to play music. Right, right. And I, and I thought that, that really, really hit hard. And, you know, of course, mm-hmm. I stepped off the touring wig, and I, I'm, I'm a pickup artist. So when, when groups come through town or there's not a percussionist, they'll call me up and say, hey, man, you know, we got a couple bucks here. Do you want to come join the show? Absolutely. You know, totally. uh, there's nothing like the there's nothing like the instant gratification of an audience right up front. And you talked about mm-hmm. earlier about a smaller venue. I mean, I've been blessed to play in front of a hundred thousand people. Scared the fuck mm-hmm. out of me, man. That was at the Rose Bowl, and sure, you know, and sure. I didn't I didn't like it. I was more thrilled as being a former athlete about how many hoofs went across that gridiron. That was more exciting yeah. to me at all. 
But I yeah. like the fact of being in because when I was younger, I mean, I used to have that Neil Pert setup of a, a mm-hmm. percussion, more shit than I need to do because it looked good. Now, as we get right. older and as our and as we do want to do less, we take the command mm-hmm. of what's out there. Now, when Matt oh, is on, when Matt's on stage, and when you get your writer and so on and so forth, are you traveling with mm-hmm. any of your own rig, or is everything being backlined for you? No, nah, uh, a lot of it um, is backlined. I will bring my keyboard if if needed. Um, mm-hmm. Man, it's funny because over the years, there's nothing nothing in the world like playing a grand piano. And when I was on tour with Megan Hill, too, I got grand pianos every every gig. Um, but something when it comes to my show, I enjoy a keyboard. I, I wish I could have a grand piano, but I enjoy the keyboard in front of the stage. I like being in front, you know, just a few mm-hmm. feet away from the first uh, first person. So I'll, if, even if there's a piano, I'll still play the piano for a song or two, but um, I'll bring a keyboard and I usually bring a guitar as well. Yeah, and, and I asked that question because... We were blessed here at Intertalk and Jackie's group. We were the last interview with Mr. Al Jarreau before we lost him this year. That's and, amazing. Uh, I, I, I still get choked up because Al was here, Matt, sure. in my home. He was actually mm. in my living room. We were face-to-face three and a half hours with this man, and we were talking mm-hmm. about the fact of all the years. He just literally got back from Montreux, you know, paying in right. front of thousands and thousands of people. But Al said to me, Jackie, you know, you know what I love to do? I love it when I go into a small kind of a cool speakeasy situation where mm-hmm. I can actually look down there and I can sweat on that, that guy's blue suede shoes. Right. You know, I can right. hear the, I can hear them breathe and so yeah. on. He goes, and there's just something there that gets that situation. Now with that said that I kind of drew that little bit of a picture, you already explained the mm-hmm. fact that you prefer a smaller venue itself, but when you're mm-hmm. doing gigs like that, let's put money to the side for a second. <clears throat> Do you prefer you and the piano or if you had your druthers, would you surround yourself with the Yo Cats on stage? Or is that predicated oh, love, upon the type of gig? I love the band. I love, I love, uh, I'm insecure. So the band kind of covers that up a little bit for me. Uh, but right. there will always be a couple songs where I'm, it's just me and guitar, just me and piano uh, every show. Mm-hmm. And I do a lot of solo shows. So that's not to say I, I, I do them all the time. But I love having my friends on stage with me and I can show I, I love showing people off that there, there's rarely a show that I do that I don't bring a friend, an, another singer friend or another instrumentalist up on stage with me because I love showing them off. I love uh, the, the the variety of it. And, I, and I, man, the band is I, I'll always choose the band. You know, you know, it's so cool about that, too, Matt, because, you know, there's times when you're on stage and you're surrounded by your brothers and sisters and you guys get into that quintessential groove that is so locked in. I can speak for oh, yeah. myself. I'm sure I can speak for you, but how many times has it ever gotten so good on stage where you actually forgot there was an audience out there because you were oh, so in, you know, were so in the groove with your players, right? You know, all the and, time. Uh, yeah, and, you know, and there's times too. I tell a lot of younger guys. I've seen younger cats on on stage, and if someone screws up, they get that look, and we call it in the time we get that funja face. So you're pissed off. And I tell a lot of young guys, mm-hmm. man, you know what? Here, let me just kind of give you a little bit of advice. I tell these kids, we're all gonna fuck up. I mean, the, oh, yeah. the, the greatest, greatest singers in the world forget their, forget their own, um, their, their words, their music. But right. the bottom line is I learned from my mentor, Emilio Castillo from Tower of Power, who I originally started out with. He said, mm-hmm. if you fuck up during a song, welcome that. But also when you get back to that second part of that song, fuck up again. Cause it throws sure. the audience completely off. And then when you do that and when you're around the yo cats, how many times has Matt screwed up? And you guys, oh, the audience doesn't know the difference, but you look at the you look at the bandmates, and you guys are laughing your asses off. Absolutely, absolutely. Mistakes yeah. are funny, man. They're going to happen regardless. I've played with Stevie Wonder, and he made, he's made, you know everybody. They've all made mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. It's the, I understand wanting to have throw a perfect show, but it's the people that get angry. I'm just like, stop it. Like the, the, yeah. we're only human. You know, that's the, half the reason why I named the album that. You know, and, and when you sit and you talk about Stevie, I've had the pleasure. Being around Stevie, I mean, last year at Nam, did you make Nam uh, in 2017? No, I haven't been to Nam in a couple of years. I've had the shows usually. You're not, you're not missing anything. It's just, it's bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> but right. it went viral, man. Um, at the Marriott stage, um, that is uh, headed up by a good friend of mine, Tim Moyer. Uh, Tim mm. puts all the talent on that stage, and this one cat, I don't remember his name, would be hard pressed to even tell you, is a guitar player. And all mm-hmm. of a sudden, it went viral. It was something like 5 million views already. Stevie took it upon mm-hmm. himself. Stevie Wonder, he mm-hmm. and his half-brother brought him up on stage. 
the kid was doing superstition, and Stevie walks oh, in yeah. now, 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 and, and Stevie gets up there and he and he tears it up. Yeah, and that's just the way his vibe is. So going back, and you just mentioned the plaque uh, doing that. When you are intimidated by great singers like Brian McKnight and, and Stevie Wonder and Christina Aguilera, how teach mm-hmm. the young guys out there, teach the old guys out there. How do you overcome that fear, if it's you want to call it fear? Well, it used to be whiskey, but I don't do that anymore. Uh, I, uh, I have, you, you come to a realization where, okay, well, he's Brian McKnight. He does what he does. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to add to this doing what I do, and people like what I do, and some people probably don't like what I do. But there's a niche for every kind of voice, every kind of musician. Um, you know, I – I think Brian McKnight's got one of the greatest voices I've ever heard. That doesn't mean he's the best mm-hmm. singer in the world. It, it no. you know, uh, Nat King Cole, uh, and James Taylor, like we said, they don't, they don't have, they, they're, they don't have massive ranges with riffs and runs for days, but we love their voices. Like, so it's, it's a, it's a preference thing, man. And, and I think that everybody adds to adds it's music. Like we said earlier, it's music man. and what, whatever style, whatever you can add, whatever you bring to the table, let's have fun with it. Yeah, man. It's like, and, and Matt, I have to ask you a question because you have a great song, one of my favorite songs uh, all together. Yes, I've been overdosing on your music. I'm okay. I'm going to smoke <laughs> up your ass. I'm just a fan of your voice. I appreciate it. My brother, when you came up with the song called Leaving L.A. Yeah. Um, uh, why did you that leave That was, was a um, – that started with a friend of mine who was the – quintessential i'm an actress i'm gonna to move to la and make it big and it didn't happen for her so she moved right. back after only like a year year and a half um i was in la for a while uh, a couple years living with my then girlfriend mm-hmm. and uh i went on tour i went on a three four month tour that started in san francisco went down to la across to florida and then up to uh boston and when I, we got to Boston, the area where my parents live, about two hours uh, west, me and my wife stayed there for a little bit. And um, we, uh, she, she, she fell in love with New York City. And I started working a lot mm. more when I came out east. There, there was a possible, hey, let's go. Um, let, let's, you know, sorry, my battery's running out on my phone. I'm going to plug it in real quick. Go ahead, um, go ahead, baby. I'm look- there was a... Uh, there was a thought of moving back to LA, uh, but there was a lot more work. We were just both kind of killing it in New York. Um, and for independent musicians, I actually read a book and I can't remember who wrote it, but they always said for independent musicians, the Northeast with the bevy of cities and places to play within an eight hour drive is, is there's so many different cities and so many different places Mm -hmm. to play. Um, that was attractive to me. And then I did a little TV show out here for a little while and, and it just be, kind of became home. And that's not to say we won't go back out to LA at any right. point, but I think you go where the work is. And right now both me and my wife are, are working a lot more in New York than we were in Los Angeles at, right now. That's not, you know, and what we do, it could change tomorrow. So who knows? Matthew, you know what we're heading for right now? We're heading for the end of the third segment, the first hour of a two hour interview. Guys, I hope you're Sweet. enjoying this as much as I am. And, uh, so when we come back on this uh, this break, we're going to go into segment number four, the second hour of a two-hour interview with my in-studio guest, amazing pianist, singer-songwriter, great all-around guy, Mr. Matt Cousin. Guys, Jackie Bertoni, Jackie's Groove, brought to you by Talk Radio Network. You're into all things music. Guys, don't go anywhere. I've got a bunch of questions coming up, and I'm sure Matt has got a bunch of answers. Stay tuned. Bye-bye. I hope so. This is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Groove. Come join me weekly on my journey through the music business as I take you behind the velvet rope, interviewing industry notables such as Al Dimiola, Michael McDonald, and Al Jarreau, to name but a few. Listen to their stories on being in the studios recording number one hits and onto the stages throughout the globe. Allow me to be your music historian. You can hear me live every Monday at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time or 24-7 on Jackie's Groove.com. 
Ready to get your groove on? Hi, this is Tim Dolbear from Eclectica Studios. I'm a full-time mixing and recording engineer. I work with Grammy winners, labels, and indie artists using state-of-the-art digital mixing and restoration tools and the very best in analog gear. Really, though, it's my ability to bring tracks to life and fulfill your vision for your music. This has made me sought after by producers and artists worldwide. So spend your time working on music and not chasing a mix down a rabbit hole. Go to timdolbear.com and check out our free one song mix offer. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on Intertalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. Hi, this is Al DiMiola, and you're listening to Jackie's Groove with Jackie Petoni. <laughs> Jackie's Groove. Come journey with us through the rhythm of the music business with your host, Jackie Bertoni. Welcome back to segment number four out of a two-hour interview with my in-studio guest, Mr. Matt Cusson. When we were on the last break, before the last break, we talked about leaving L.A. and you started to elaborate when you made the decision to leave. Because everybody thinks this is the land of opportunity, and it's really not. I mm-hmm. mean, you know, it, it's it, it's a crapshoot, man. It's, you know, it's who you know, and it's where you are at the right time, the wrong right. time. Um, did you regret leaving L.A.? No, I mean, I love L.A. Absolutely love it, uh, especially, you know, for the reason why most people go there, the weather and the and the girls and the beaches and the palm trees and all that. Um, man, I love New York City. For me, I loved L.A. and I did a lot of really great things out there. And I'll be back. I'm definitely coming back. Um, for me, I guess, I don't know if it was the circle I was in or or just some of the opportunities, but it felt music started to feel like a, just a business. And don't play that chord and let's not do that thing. And let's, you know, it was, let's stay away from certain things. When I got to New York, man, it was just a bunch of artists getting together, writing and having fun and playing. And, um, you know, as an indie musician, like I said before, there was so many more, there was a lot of, there's so many places to play in New York city. Uh, and then if you go three hours North, you're in Boston where there's a ton of places to Mm -hmm. play. And then there's Albany and Hartford and DC and Philly all within a few hours of each other. So it it just, It made sense. And then, of course, like I the good thing about music is we can do it from anywhere these days. I have a home studio. And uh, if my, my wife started working way more in New York. So once if that ever dies down and we decide to give L.A. a try, I'm all I'm all for it. You know, I, I do love L.A. The, it, the song was just a tune. You know, it was definitely wasn't a uh, I'm never coming back thing. Right. You know, and, and I, I'm, I'm 100 percent behind that because my wife and I. Built and uh, built a home out here uh, in the wine country in Temecula. Oh, beautiful! I mean, our back, oh, yeah, our backyard is the wineries. Yeah, man. You know, and mm-hmm. you know, somebody asked me not too long ago. They go, "Do you miss the studios?" I said, "You know what? When I'm in a studio, I miss it for the first ten minutes." Yeah. You know, and and, and then I 
prefer to be here in my own studio. Um, the record labels love it because they don't have to go through the expenditure and they're getting the same sound. And, uh, right. you know, and I, and I can walk around with my, you know, with shorts on, you know, and do what I want to do and not have to worry to answer right. anybody else, you know. So that's the benefit right. of that. But, you know, I'm going to ask you a question. This is a question actually my wife brought up. And I love mm-hmm. this question. In fact, a lot of the artists, that I t- all the artists that I've talked to, if Matt Cousin wasn't playing music, if music wasn't in your mm-hmm. vocabulary, what would Matt be mm-hmm. doing? Well, my, my original dream was to be in an NBA, but I'm only 5'9", yeah. and I'm white, and I'm not. I was a very good basketball player, very good, and I still kind of am. Uh, I got scouted by a few colleges, but sports is to this day. I like, I got ESPN on. That's why I keep turning my head left. Uh, and I would have tried to be a basketball player, but good God, that would have never happened. So I, my, my brother's in social work and, and, uh, he helps out kids with auti- autism and kids that have had really, really rough upbringing. Um, mm-hmm. now I can't think of a life without music and there's nothing else I want to do. But I think if, if to answer the question, since I wasn't going to be a professional basketball player, I would probably get into the stuff my, my brother's doing because I see, you know, it's uh, here's some of the be- unbelievable stories and the stuff he goes through, and it's incredible. You know, and, and, and Matthew, this is kind of like a – maybe it's a kind of a parallel question, and I'm curious. Mm-hmm. I want to know, and so are the listeners. Um, it's called a bucket list, and it's also called the artist you would love to play with. Does Matt mm-hmm. have a bucket list, and if you had your – you know, your I Dream of Genie moment where you can sit there and nod your head. Who would you find yourself mm-hmm. on stage with performing and why? Oh, man, so many. I, 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 I got to play with Stevie. I got to play with James Taylor a few times. Um, those, those are two that definitely stick out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think more for me than just being on stage with them is, is being able to sit down with these guys and write a song. I think that would be the bucket list. Those right. guys, Paul Simon, uh, I would love to be on stage with D'Angelo, uh, John Mayer, all those guys. Like I got to meet a lot of these guys and play with a lot of them, but to write a song with them and pick their brain that way would be, that would be my, my bucket list. That's a, that's a, that's a fair answer. You know, and I, I need to ask this question also. I use this as a cross comparison, but you know, when I had my, my, my longevity, when I was 19 years old, that's when I started working with Tower of Power. And that mm-hmm. actually worked against me. And let me explain mm. what I meant by that. I became like the good looking girl in mm. high school. Nobody wanted to ask out because they figured I already had a date, you right. know, and, and with that situation, they figure, well, he was working with tower of power. This boy must be a motherfucker. Well, yeah. you don't get to work with tower of power unless you are a motherfucker. So yeah, I'm blowing smoke up my ass right there. But with that <laughs> said, a lot of people wouldn't hire me because of that background that since changed um, mm-hmm. as I got much older so my question is, when people are out there and, and they look at Matt Cousin and they know Matt's music and so on, mm-hmm. do you think your, let's, let's face it, do you think your look slash vocal prowessness has been a positive or a negative for you in your, in your business? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't think you know that it's been a negative or a positive. I think um, uh, it's it's to each his own basically it's it's however mm-hmm. you want to look or listen to me and and uh you know james taylor in an interview once said you know music these days is blue collar work and you got to take it all and i kind of look at everything that way it, it is what it is you know we're gonna do still do gigs for a hundred bucks i don't want to but you know i still like to play so uh whatever contributes whether it's the look or the style or the voice to 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 me working or and 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 getting music across that it it is what it is. I don't, I'm not sure, uh, what contributed to what, but, um, you know, I'll take, what I'll take the gigs as long as they keep coming. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny mm-hmm. because, um, I use, I use this analogy, you know, it's like, um, I, I have, uh, my longevity and my legacy that goes back with a great reggae band that's still killing it. Um, the group's called third world and they're, they're mm-hmm. a plethora of hits, 98 degrees in the shade, uh, 96 yep. degrees in the shade, uh, Traj I love now that we found love, et cetera. <laughs> You right. know, I would go off the uh, these big tours like the Reggae Sun Splash or the Bob Marley Day festivals, and I'd come out of these mm-hmm. big venues of 20,000 people, and I happened to come out of the place called the Universal Amphitheater, another place that went by the wayside, um, you mm-hmm. know, because they needed a Harry Potter fucking exhibit over there. But the fact right. is, I was playing at a little local club in Newport Beach, Balboa, called Studio Cafe, 
and I'm walking mm-hmm. in there, and I'm actually I've got my uh, one of my congas on my back, and I'm walking in, and this guy stops and he goes, "Oh, oh my God!" He goes, "Man, uh, Jackie, right? Third World." I said, "Yeah, man." He goes, "Oh man, what a great show last night." I said, "Thank you, man. Thank mm-hmm. you." And he goes, "Were you playing here today?" And I said, "Yeah." And he goes, "Why?" Yeah. And I looked and I looked at him. I said, "Because I have a mortgage." Exactly. You know, and so a lot of people don't realize the fact that, you know, this is a fleeting business. You know, it is a right. situation is you've got to have something to fall back on or your fame itself. Right. You know, and, yeah. and so with that said, um, answer this question. And a lot of, and I'm going to ask it again because I got your vibe already. I know I can mm-hmm. ask certain questions to certain people. Oh, whatever you this want. Is very, yeah. very, this, is a very, this is a very tough one, man, because, you know, you are the quintessential player. You are a musician. But I'm going to ask mm-hmm. you just a series of que- uh, questions, just one question, one answer. It's very really unfair, and but it, be honest. I'm going to ask you a musician, or excuse me, an instrument, and I want you to tell me what your favorite player is on that. And starting out right now, drummers worldwide. Who would that be? Um, man, uh, it changes all the time. But because Mayor's new album come, came out, I love Steve Jordan's playing on it. Absolutely, uh, Steve Gad. I'm going to throw him in there too. Well, mm. Only one brother. Only one. Bass. Same. Uh, Pino, man. I love Pino Palladino right now. Paladino. Every time I hear him play. Love it. Guitar. Mm. Mike Landau. Mike Landau, without question. Right, right, man. <laughs> Thank Mike's you. a friend of mine, so I have to, th- I have to throw that in there. I mean, it's, but that's Mike a crazy question. Best, because man. He was so nice. He's, he's the best, man. But it's, it's someone asked me that question. I said, they said, man, of all your friends, I said, don't ask me that question. That's why I came up with these questions. Keyboard right. players, keyboardists. Um, are we going to differentiate piano from keyboard? Yeah, that's cool. Then I got to go. I got to go see you with keyboard man. I think he's amazing. Okay. And and piano, uh, piano is Oscar Peterson. Wow, really? Mm-hmm. He's one of my yeah, favorites, man. Yeah. I would have thought you would have said a Joe Sample kind of a vibe because of your your R and B influence. No, I, I man, okay. I never. I, I like I like a lot of some of that that uh, smooth jazz type stuff, but I, 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 man, Oscar just blew my mind. Saxophonist, Coltrane. Wow, you really went the opposite side there. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Cool, man. Are you a lover of horn sections? Oh yeah, there's there's a bunch of horn sections on the record. Oh, is it really? Yeah, uh, not a bunch. Uh, new- three or four tunes. Yeah, I I love it. I love it. I love it. Hey man, mm-hmm. you know, as we as again, you're still a young you're still a young la- lad itself. But I want you know, mm-hmm. and you're in shape. But I want to ask this question because a lot of the uh, the listeners want to know this also. We talked earlier about your preparation before walking in the studio. Mm-hmm. I mean, you pr- pretty much you're going to sit down behind the uh, the keyboard or the microphone and you're going to start playing. And recording, yeah. but let's talk about a live gig. In, a, a day in the life of Matt Cousin. You wake mm-hmm. up in the morning. You're out of your element. You're in a different city. Yeah. How does your day start? What What sends you down to the venue to the time the lights open up? Talk. Tell us about that day. Lots and lots of coffee. I've become quite mm-hmm. the coffee addict. Uh, as, as I I'm doing right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, a, I'm gonna do it the second we hang up. Okay, so you got the coffee in your system. You're uh, you're being picked up by uh, by a van or whatever it is, and um, and you're on your way. Sorry, I was getting another call your, there, and I'm black out. There we go. Okay, and you're when on I, your way uh, to the venue. Yeah, what, what, right. I, I'm I'm always conscious of my voice when I have to sing, especially if it's a longer show. Um, mm-hmm. I almost start warming up in the morning when I wake up. I do these heavy breathing things, and and. Uh, and, and when I'm in the shower, I just do a little light singing here and there. Right. And, and that's, that, that's one thing I'm always conscious of is where my voice is at from morning to sound check to show. Um, but man, it's, it's, it became, I don't want to say it's second nature cause I get really excited still for every single show, mm-hmm. but it's, it's a very exciting walk to the venue and I can't wait to start, uh, but, um, there's not a lot of process, man. I try not to make it a routine. I don't like to get into a routine because if that routine ever gets broken i don't want to be psyched out you dig does uh i try to make it as easy going as i can really 
Does Matt welcome guests before or prefer to wait till after the show? Oh, it doesn't matter. Either way. Open, open book there. Yeah. Yeah. Now, talking about a vocalist itself, people want to know this too. Are you a person that likes to eat before a gig or are you a light eater and then do the, do the bad <laughs> no, thing I eat. eating at 11 o'clock? I do both, man. I eat before the show, after the show, before I fall asleep. Um, I have been, since I hit my 30s, I'm trying to be more conscious about the mm-hmm. cheese thing and the alcohol thing before shows. Right. But, and if, if I'm in New York and there's a two dollar pizza place next door i'm not gonna not go get a two dollar piece of pizza before the show so uh it's uh i'm trying to be better but no i I have no real food things but uh yeah and i love eating after a show because all that energy has gone and you're hungry you dig but yeah but it's you know but as as you turn when you get past the age of 50 my brother let me just tell you something Mm -hmm. 11 o'clock to go packages are the devil's the devil's game. Oh, of course, because of course, it, you know, because yeah. there's you know on venues they love to sit there and get that to, you know get that backstage food with the dilly right. trays and everything else and so on and so forth. So, sure. And with that said, mm-hmm. out of curiosity, what does Matt find himself favoring in the way of a cuisine, food wise? Cheese, Except anything for- with cheese on it. Just put yeah, cheese on it. I'll eat it. Exactly. <laughs> but is it? A, I love but Italian. Is it Italian? Food. Yeah, and yeah. what is your background? What is Kusan? What is that family? What is your your? Uh, my mom is one hundred percent Italian, and my dad is one hundred percent French. So French and Italian. Um, my dad is actually a gourmet chef, uh, really? specializes in Italian, and it's 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 hard to come home and eat, and then go other places and eat. That's why I usually end up doing a, you know the fast food thing a lot of times. But uh, yeah, he's he's the best cook I know for sure. You know, it, it's funny that you bring that up talking about food because. Um, I had on last year a uh, dear friend of mine, Liberty DeVito, uh, the drummer for mm-hmm. Billy Joel. He's the one who recorded all the Billy Joel hits. And we were talking about um, some type of a food. And, of course, you know, my studio's in my home, and my wife's in the other room kicking back. She's watching it on uh, Facebook Live. But I was talking about mm-hmm. um, um, a, a, an Italian meal. And I can hear my mm-hmm. wife in the background. She's going, "You, honey. So I finally said, you know what, get in here. So my wife walks down the hallway, and she commandeers the radio. And she says, Liberty, mm-hmm. my husband knows nothing about food. And what he's talking about is the gabuzel or the, you know, the cabanar or whatever it was. And then all of a sudden, yeah. I sat back and I listened to Liberty and my wife talking about food. And I, I mean, we, we got hungry talking about it. And that's that, yeah. that's that whole vibe itself about, you know, is there a favorite city? Is there a favorite country uh, that the Mr. Mm-hmm. and Mrs. love to travel to? Uh, share with the listeners about that. Where do you like to go? Where do you travel to? Dude, uh, I mean, right in our backyard, New York City has the best restaurants in the world. Mm-hmm. Um it's hard to it, 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 it's from the one dollar pizza places to the to the you dig I'm actually uh, with a friend of mine we went out a couple of years ago to this restaurant two of us no alcohol and the bill was nine hundred bucks uh, we were there from ten p.m. to three in the morning just eating food after food after it was incredible so you know, uh, I gotta give I, New York I, a big shout out with when it comes to the food um, when I went to Paris a couple of years ago. I think I ate everything that I saw and I came back 15 pounds heavier. So Paris, there's no, there's no man. That's the thing. We love food so much. There's no go-to. It's just show me a restaurant. I'll find something I love to eat. And, and it's because it's my family, we're talking about my family, my wife's family, they're all from the uh, Bronx and Yonkers and Westchester County okay. and so on and so forth. And uh, okay. you know, so you, when you, when you come back from New York, you know, you have to stick your nose up to things out here. It's just not right. It's in the <laughs> waters, they say, brother. So, you guys, with that right. said, can you believe it? We're coming out of segment number four. It's moving along, man. Bam. Keep those questions coming in because I'm going to throw them back to Matthew. And so when we come back on segment number five, I want to talk more as we get a little bit more. I don't want to talk about political, but I want to talk about the politics of music and uh, and and how it is affecting you and, and the other entertainers out there that have been in the uh, – that are getting a little bit long in the tooth, as they say. So – you guys, don't go anywhere. This is Jackie but Tony Jackie's group brought to you by Intertalk Radio Network. You're into all things music. We're stepping out of segment number four into five. So, guys, don't go anywhere. Keep those questions coming in. I'll throw it to Matt. Stay tuned. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. 
dropping beat, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on Intertalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. Hi, I'm Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on Intertalk Radio. Each week, I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear. Make this your vinyl night. I'm John J.R. Robinson, and every week, music creation comes alive through stories, experiences, and sounds when vinyl records filled our hearts and minds. My friends and I share our tips and techniques used in creation of iconic tracks for recording artists such as Michael Jackson, Eric Clapton, Quincy Jones, and Steve Winwood, to name a few. Vinyl has emerged hot, and the soul of vinyl defines art and passion, which burns deepest at night. Tune in every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on entertalkradio.com. Come journey with us through the rhythm of the music business with your host, Jackie Bertoni. Welcome back to segment number five on the two-hour interview with my in-studio guest, singer-songwriter, all-around great guy, Mr. Matt Cousin. Matthew, welcome back, man. Tell me about that tune. You talk about, again, another whole different spectrum of music. Give me the <laughs> yeah. genesis of that tune. That tune, uh, I think it was going on a uh, Ray Charles bender or something. Um, and subconsciously, I kind of just started writing these blues changes. And... Um, Man, I, I, when I wrote it, I wrote it on guitar, and that melody uh, of the hook, the just kind of came in my head, and I kind of, kind of went from there. I gave it, I don't want to say a typical blues verse, but it, it's, right. it's, you know, it's, it's uh, reminiscent of, you know, like a Hard Times Ray Charles or You Don't Know Me or something like that. Mm-hmm. But um, and then I got my man Zane Carney, who's a phenomenal guitar player out there in L.A. To play keys, I got um, my friend Ali Rockberger, who's with Mr. Barrington and all those cats. I mm-hmm. think he plays with Carly Simon and all those guys mm-hmm. to play organ on it because I don't trust myself with an organ. Mm-hmm. And uh, it kind of came together. And that's actually, when I do shows, that's the most popular tune uh, during the show really? usually because it gives the band a chance to stretch out. You know, lyrically, it's comical when I say my wallet's a joke, but it's nice being broke next to you. It always gets right. a chuckle and, a, and an awe. So I think, um, yeah, that's always been one of the favorites, man. I've been playing that for about a year now. It's always been one of the favorites. Question for you, my friend. If <clears throat> mm-hmm. you had your drug, well, you do have your druthers, it's your name on the marquee. Is there mm-hmm. a song that the audience really, really loves to hear from Matt Cousin? And if Matt didn't have to play the song again, he's okay with that? Is there a song? No, there's not. I haven't had that fire and rain yet, you know? So. I don't mind as long as I'm making the audience happy. I'll sing whatever you want me to sing. Um, somebody yelled out, uh, 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 "What's the what's the tune that every what's the uh, Freebird?" And we started playing right. it just for fun. It was more of a joke than anything, but it was fun. And you know, uh, no, I don't have that song yet. 
you know, and that's cool. Like, and the reason why I mention that because I just keep going back um, with Lionel Richie. Uh, someone had asked Lionel during an interview if he gets sick of playing all night long, and he says, right. "No." He goes, "Be honest with you, no." Number one, you know, it's afforded me the luxuries I have in my life because I own right. the song, I own the publishing, and so on. But the fact of the matter mm-hmm. is, when he looks out into an audience, he mm-hmm. sees different responses from different people. So it's like playing a new song yeah. every time <clears throat> he brings it out. And so, right. you know, with that said. Um, the music itself that you produce and so on, mm-hmm. do you, when you play it live, do you take it in a different trajectory live sometimes, switch it up completely, or do you stay true Absolutely. to what you put on? You do. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's a little bit of both. I, I like to um, give it a, especially with the new songs to, to, to play them like they are on the record, but we stretch out, you right. know, I, when you come to my shows, it's like we're hanging in my living room it's 50% comedy. I may talk way too much, um, but we have fun, man. And I show off the musicians. I'll always give solos. I'll always let them do their thing. I'll that. always bring someone up. So it's, it's, you know, it's, it's half and half. We do leaving LA. That's just like the record usually because some songs you got to stay true. You know, it depends on the song though, but I like to stretch out. I mean, think about it, man. It, it, isn't it pretty fucking cool what we do for a living. I mean, we question it sometimes. It's fast, man. Do. You know, yeah. and but the fact of the matter is, and especially the fact if you're making an income doing it, being a truly right. a working musician. Um, yeah, let's go. Let's go back into like an emotional situation here, because obviously we're doing this not just for the funds, not just for the chicks. We're doing it because it feeds our soul. Mm-hmm. But, so with that said, I, I want you to think for a second, man, because I've had this aha moment. I'm going to consider it your aha moment. Do you remember mm-hmm. where you were, what you were feeling, and uh, what song was it? You first time you heard yourself on the radio. Yeah, I was in um, London, and really? uh, I was in London doing a, a, a tour. Uh, a, it was a Michael Jackson tribute tour, and was this the first time? I think this was the first time, and I had just, uh, my record came out in 08, my first one, and I re-released in, oh, I think 2010 or 11, and by Spectra Records, and they really wanted to push this jazz tune that I wrote that ended up winning the John Lennon songwriting contest and a bunch of other stuff. Um, and we got interviewed to, for, to promote the show that we were doing. And I think it was at like one in the morning too. So who knows who was right. listening, but somebody texted me and said, Hey, you got to turn on BBC, whatever number it was. And I turned it on and the song called one of those nights was playing. And I just, I was half excited, half weepy, half I'm tired. I just want to go to bed. So it was, it was, uh, but it was incredible. It was, there, there is nothing quite like that. Um, you just hope somebody else heard it and, and felt moved by it. Yeah. Cause you know, I, I did a, a great thing called uh, oral history. It's a thing that the mm-hmm. NAM foundation puts out. And I said this to all okay. the situation, uh, to all the listeners out there, I said, when you hear yourself on the radio for the first time, none of it's just your music, but a song. In this case, I don't have an, my own album. I've been playing on a plethora of albums. So when I still, mm-hmm. this day, when I still hear music, it never gets old, man. It never gets old because oh, never. you want to stop yep. and you, yeah, you want to roll the window down and say, hey, flip this station on, man. That's me playing in the background. You know, and it's, right. and it's that there's feeling because like we, we do this. And there's nothing like it. You know, and it's it's that whole thing that, you know, gets, gets you going and that different vibe and so on. So, if I was to sit there and commandeer your iPhone or mm-hmm. your music library, what am I going to mm-hmm. hear? What's Matt listening to? Oh, man. I have probably 10,000 songs in my iPhone. Um, okay. Recently, I've been into Kendrick Lamar's new record, uh, PJ Morton's new record, John Mayer's new record. Um, uh, but I'm a massive Rufus Wainwright fan. I have every single one of his records. Um, D'Angelo for sure, even though he only has mm-hmm. two or three records, uh, man, it's all over the map. I just downloaded, um, uh, I, I don't know if it's kind of like a greatest hits, but, but, uh, Gustav Mahler, uh, I downloaded 30 of his tunes. I just downloaded the new John Williams, Steven Spielberg record that came out. Um, I'm a massive John Williams fan. He might be to me the greatest musician of our time. Um, no question. so it's really, it goes, it goes all over the place. And and obviously your mood, your vibe, your overall feeling, 
with music, obviously that will set you in a right mm-hmm. position. Like if you're down and you're feeling alone or whatever, who do you mm-hmm. reach for on that when you're in that situation Ooh. when you're really feeling down? I like, I think, I think Rufus is a great down guy to listen to. James Taylor makes me feel better. Dijavan, I think it's pronounced Javan, makes me feel better. Right. Um, uh, classical music, uh, Miles, you know, I don't like to think too much when I'm down. I don't think. Um, so oh, it, it might, I might t- t- tend, tend to stick with, with, get with, with a little softer side of things. <clears throat> Matthew, when you're with mm-hmm. Mrs. Kusan. Yes. You ever listen to yourself? That's so you're weird to love? say still. Come on now. So, wait, oh, wait, hell wait, wait. no. God, no. Uh, Come, never. Don't never. lie to me, man. Never in a million years. No, because okay. I would feel, uh, uh, insecure and why the hell did I sing that that way? And what the hell, you know, I no music in general makes me think too much during, right. during the, uh, love making process. Yeah. Just, you just, the one, one thing you didn't have is, excuse me, my little, my golden, what kind of dog do you have? Me. Golden retriever. Golden we love retriever. our dogs over here, man. That is my, that's my girl. It's my Gingy. She's, she, she's, a, she's the, uh, the quintessential protector. So my wife is out mm-hmm. front right now. She heard the uh, doorbell <clears throat> ring, and that's why she's yelling at it. So, okay, so you, that it. was a question from the listeners out there. You don't, you don't do the nasty by listening to your beautiful voice. Okay, that's never. That's God no. Okay, I'm sick of my that's, voice. Yeah, actually, actually, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna put that on a questionnaire now. From any time I do a an interview with a vocalist, <clears> I gotta ask that question. <clears> so. But yeah, that said, yeah. hey, let, let me let me ask you this question, brother. Mm-hmm. Um. When it comes to when it comes to music, mm-hmm. and it comes to what drives you in the morning, what gets you through the day, <clears throat> mm-hmm. when you sit down and you go to head and, and you you're thinking at night over a song. I mean, are you going to bed with a melody or a harmony, or waking up with a melody and harmony in your head? And if you are, are you the one that writes it down, or are you like every other guy out there? A girl out there that figures I'll be awake in the morning, I'll remember it, and you forget about it. What's your process of, I, of keeping that up? I have, uh, yeah, I, I, there's not a moment in the day where something's not going through my head. I have um, my voice memos on my phone. <clears throat> um, right. my, my, I have little logic sessions where I just open them quickly and get the idea down. I right, have right. hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of ideas um, d- daily and, you know, I'm going to drive myself insane because I don't name them either. So I just mm-hmm. going through a hundred of them looking for, for, uh, for a particular one. But yeah, it's, I've hundreds of times waking up in the middle of the night and my wife will hear me humming into my phone and she's like, well, you just go to bed. And I'm like, no, <laughs> give me five seconds. Uh, but it's, it's nonstop. I got out of the shower, um, uh, not too long ago. I ended my shower quickly cause I, I was like, I got to get this down because, I know I'll have something else in my head in two minutes and I'll be, uh, and I'll forget it. So that's constant. And, and, and that's cool because, you know, working with someone like Brian Wilson, Brian's always taught me one thing. He's always taught himself one thing. And he's also t- uh, taught the, uh, you know, the, in, uh, the hundreds of thousands of people that listen to his music are say musicians. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Brian, when he walks into a studio, Brian automatically rolls tape. Cause mm. Brian's learned yeah. over his life that his best, best mm. music has always come from something that wasn't prepared. And then also right. to my right. interview last week with Richie Conson, the great uh, guitarist, Richie mm-hmm. um, says, he goes, my music, my instruments are always ready to go. So if something's right. there, I can run in the other room and I can do it. I don't have to, have to worry about, you know, get everything dialed in and so on and so forth. Do you believe in that? Right. Are you always on the ready? Oh yeah. Yeah. I don't, I, I, uh, always, I'm always ready to go. I, I don't, when we do shows, uh, this string of CD release shows I have coming up, I we don't over rehearse. I can't stand over rehearsing. Uh, I like things on the fly. I like calling things out that might surprise somebody. Hey, go to go to B flat here instead of this. I like you know random solos, random groove changes. Hey, let's go halftime here for the rest of this tune. Right. And I uh, yeah, that's music. That's what music is, man. It's 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 to me it's much. Even the reason why I have 14 completely different genres of songs on my record is because it's a momentary thing. And I may be in a different place, you know, from my New York CD release show to the Boston CD release show. So I like it to be in the moment. I like people coming. They're going to get a different experience if they come tomorrow night. Yeah, it's so cool. You know, and we talked about it in the first segment about 
my uh, male friends that are new daddies um, to their yeah. babies. And, and, that, and that song, my favorite song, and I'm sorry, from you is Once Upon a Time. And I, I just yeah. Hey, do you have that? Because I, I could give it to you if you don't, brother. I got I got it right here. Hold on for one second. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm, I, I just want to put it up, man, because it's one of my. If my computer wants to cooperate with me, um, but you guys, yeah, I wrote that song for my nieces. Check this out. Uh, it's called Once Upon a Time by Mr. Matthews. Yet the pages rest your little head, and they wrap you up inside your bed. And then take you to a place that you'll only find in your paradigm mind from the stories that you read. But if happy endings are just pretendings, then why the golden smile? So I wish you me, I wish you might find your once upon a time. So you said <laughs> that you lost your slip related night and that elephants can really fly and those are diamonds light in the sky Yeah, I have to be careful with that man because this company called Facebook doesn't understand <laughs> promotion and if they can't get a piece of the pie they don't want to talk about it. So you guys, <laughs> do yourselves a favor out there, man. If you are a mommy and a daddy or a grandma or a grandpa, it's called Once Upon a Time by Matt Cousin. Uh, there's a great, great part. There's a great piece of it uh, that Matthew extracted from a thing called Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it, that got me, and I got goosebumps. I just got uh, it's mentioned by the studio. They said, pull the music now before Facebook pulls it. So, But uh, you guys have got to do a minute. And, and it's nothing worse, Matthew. It's nothing worse. Is when you own the song, and my yeah. and my artists have given us permission. They've given us the go ahead to use the music. It still right. gets tagged. So, well, that's the right. part about the music and the word music and business should never share the same uh, line together. So, exactly, I had to share it with you. So, you know what? When we come well, thank back, you, man. And we still got another. Oh, please, we got another minute and a half in the segment. Mm-hmm. The next and last segment, Matthew, is going to be all about Matthew Kusan. Meaning, the fact is how we can get the listeners worldwide to patronize you, to uh, help pay that mortgage, and also to how to <laughs> stock you, for the lack of a better word. And I'm going to bring on I'll my partner, the, uh, the CEO of the, of the network, uh, Florentino Buenaventura, on the next segment, because if it wasn't for Florentino, you and I would not be talking to today. And so awesome. I'm going to let him earn his dollars. And uh, that sounds we're going to talk more about it. We're going we're gonna to wrap it up, man. And I, and I just I want to talk about things like, in the closing part of the, uh, the interview, for the young kids out there, who missed something. I interviewed an amazing vocalist by the name of Julia Fordham, one of the girls I've had a crush on for years. And mm-hmm. she said that the kids would probably never understand in her British accent about that mm-hmm. feeling of peeling back the plastic on a thing called a CD or an yeah. album. Oh and yeah. Reading what is called liner notes and so on. And I'm going to talk yep. about that, man. I want to talk about a thing. Kids write this down. It's called record release Tuesday. Now they call it record release Friday. Yep. Always fucking with us. So we'll, uh, we'll get more into that. <laughs> so you guys, you know, I'm having a great time, man. When Same. I'm off this uh, break, I'm putting back that song on itself. They can't take me off if I'm listening to my own time. So with that said, guys, <laughs> you know, bring those uh, questions in the last segment of Jackie's Groove. This is Jackie Bertoni brought to you by the Intertalk Radio Network. You're, all th- you're into all things music. And when we come back, I want to say a special hello to all my sponsors on the last segment. A little bit of business here. So. You guys don't go anywhere. We're having a great time. Matthew, if you have anything else Woo! you want to talk about on this last segment, bring it up. Share with the listeners itself. And we're going to talk about where you can find Mr. Kusan on the road and hopefully in a city and a state or a country near you. So you guys don't go anywhere. This is Jackie Bertoni, Jackie's Groove, Intertalk Radio. There's that bumper music coming back on segment number six, stepping out of five. Matthew, don't go anywhere, my friend. Yes, sir. The show break. Hi, 
Hi, this is Tim Dolbear, host of Sound Experience here on InterTalk Radio. And Source Connect by Source Element is the essential tool that we use to link between my studio in Austin, Texas, and the WS radio station in San Diego. Now, with Source Connect, not only can we communicate in real time and with HD audio, but it's synced up and is of a high enough quality that I can use it for real time ADR work, remote recording, and overdubbing. And it even allows me to remotely control a DAW. Source Connect by Source Element, affordable, high quality audio and video connection over the internet for all of your production needs. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on InterTalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. Make this your vinyl night. I'm John J.R. Robinson, and every week, music creation comes alive through stories, experiences, and sounds when vinyl records filled our hearts and minds. My friends and I share our tips and techniques used in creation of iconic tracks for recording artists such as Michael Jackson, Eric Clapton, Quincy Jones, and Steve Winwood, to name a few. Vinyl has emerged hot, and the soul of vinyl defines art and passion, which burns deepest at night. Tune in every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on entertalkradio.com. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. Hi, this is Tony Lindsay, lead vocalist with Santana, and you're listening to Jackie's Groove with Jackie Bertone. <laughs> Jackie's Groove. Come journey with us through the rhythm of the music business with your host, Jackie Bertoni. Jackie's Groove. Jackie Bertoni here, brought to you by Intertalk Radio Network. You're into all things music. Guys, that song called Only Human, just to show you what Mr. Kusan talked about earlier. It's been a while, man, since he's come up with this new album. In fact, that song, Only Human, was released as a single. Matthew, how long ago did you release it as a single? And talk to the audience why uh, it took that long to finish up with this album. I think that song was in July or so. Um, about a year after Leaving L.A. came out. Um, mm-hmm. It took so long for all the typical reasons. One, cash. Uh, two, you know, waiting on musicians to get me stuff. I was real picky. I got real busy, too, um, right. touring <clears throat> over the last couple of years. So it, it was just a mixture of a lot of different stuff. Um, you know, all this music is so old to me now, but I'm, I'm still really excited for it to be new to everybody else. And you know what I love about this new album? If you guys get a chance to go on to Facebook and uh, check out Matt's page or check out uh, the, one of the small little pictures in the flyer that we put together. Matthew did this great job, man, of actually incorporating an album that looked like it came out of the 60s. Yeah. And uh, what yeah. was the inspiration for doing that kind of a vibe, man? I mean, you've got to be an old fuck like me to understand what uh, that album was with the, you know, the 33 and the third, so on. What was the inspiration of putting that album together like that? That was, honestly, man, it, it's a, it's a, we had a whole bunch of different album covers and, uh, my friend Charlene Kay, uh, who's a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, graphic artist, artist, uh, musician. She's just an all-around one of those people you hate because they're so good at everything they do. 
Um, right. I just said the word vintage to her and I told her and she knows the kind of stuff that I like. She knows I like the old James Taylor, the old Miles Davis stuff. And she came up with that and about 15 other ones. And they were all incredible. And there was like three or four in particular that we freaked out over. And that one just kind of stood out to me, man. And, and there's a couple really old school songs uh, on the record. You know, again, the only human thing goes into the different uh, styles. The why do you have a 60s uh, album cover if the whole record isn't that style? You know, I'm only human. And it's stuff I like. And I think at the end of the day, I just I like that cover. And, uh, and, that, uh, and that one with the uh, popular vote as well amongst voters that I had helped me out to decide it. Very, very, very cool. Very retro for the lack of. And, you know, I, yeah. I want to say one thing, too. I want to welcome you not only to our our network into my show, but I also want to welcome you into the uh, the Mad Hatter Society. And I say that because I'm a freak about hats. Every picture yeah. that I've seen with you, <laughs> yeah. you're wearing a hat. I mean, you don't want to know what my closet looks like. I love like. a good hat. And, all, yeah, no, and I, also, too, oof. yeah, and also too, the gentleman I'm going to bring on right now is, a, is, is responsible for you and I chopping this up today. He's... Not only a great bass player and a great my great brother, but he's also the CEO of this network, and he's also a mm. lover of hats, and uh, <laughs> yes. and so on and so yes. forth. So we 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 graciously inducted you into the Mad Hatter Society. So with that said, Florentino, mm. if you're there, please say hi to Mr. Matt. Matt, say hi to Florentino. What's up, Matty? How you doing, brother? <laughs> Florentino? Thanks for having me, man, and uh, and thanks for introducing me to Jackie. Oh man, it's it's been a pleasure. Uh, we had you on the, the changing stage, and uh, what what was. A couple of years now, man. It was a while. Right. It's been a it while. It was a long while, yeah. It's too, too long. You know, we've been talking about you coming back on, and we were waiting for this project, and, uh, you know, and yep. I, it, dude, it's so funky, dude. I, I love this track. Thank and, uh, you, man. Uh, I appreciate it, man. My, my little sister, here's a funny thing. So, you know, it's crazy when, um, you know, my little sister came up and said, I love this artist, and she started playing me your track. I'm like, that's my boy, mm-hmm. Matt. What? How do you know about Mac you saw him? But no, actually, uh, everybody awesome. should everybody should know about it. So I'm going to give a shout out to uh, Miss Jennifer so that uh, she'll Thank know you, that we're, Jennifer. she's listening. She put it on her page as well. So you know, it's it's pretty. That's awesome. Pretty awesome, man. And uh, yeah. uh, Tina, also, let me jump in here real quick because I have I have a question. A friend of mine uh, wanted to find out on the keyboard the synth opener on Only Human. What, what was that patch? That is a uh, that's actually a guitar sound. So. I had this unbelievable guitar player, Jeff Gittleman, <clears throat> play on that tune. And I basically, I like to dissect and experiment with stuff. So I basically put his guitar in a program and deleted all of the notes and just kept the overtones. And then I <clears throat> put some of them in reverse. Some of it took a while to do, but that was the end result. It's actually a guitar. Yeah, and my, my buddy wanted to find out about that, so I'm going to all text him back. When I get a chance yeah. here. So if Florentino, I'm sorry for interrupting. Go ahead and, you know, I, and I neglected Florentino. I do apologize to our sponsors. Florentino, would, I, would you just do me a favor and, and handle some of that after we talk to Matt, please? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Thank you for t- <laughs> tuning in to the Jackie Bertoni Show with guest Matt Cusan. And we'd like to give a big thanks to our partners and partners in crime, uh, Pitbull Audio at pitbullaudio.com, where they make it all happen for you. Uh, they just want you to never let it go because why – as musicians, we can't ever get it out of our system, no matter what you do in life. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're always there for you. And, of course, SIR at SIR-USA.com. So I got my I had to get my radio voice on. <laughs> and uh, SIR, uh, 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 hey, 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 you better watch out. You're going to get some jealous <laughs> women out there going. Um, yeah, SIR, they, they're, they're the ones who power young uh, young upstart musicians that are making it happen like Mr. Matt Cuson and then uh, uh, for Jackie he's got some really key key sponsors with DW and LP where you know the groove of the industry really happens there are good friends uh, uh, J.R. Robinson uh, John Paris uh, you know Danny Seraphine they all play DW and of course all of Jackie's friends who are percussionists play play uh, you know Latin percussion and then uh, uh, last but not least uh, Vader percussion uh, Vader Vader drumsticks and I had to remember right. what that is Vader drumsticks and Sapien cymbals actually and this also one- to and also to um, my newest sponsor is a company called Blue Microphones Blue Mike and that's m i c dot com. Guys, thanks for making my voice sound much better than it actually does. So that's the business part. Let's get back oh, oh, to the second. fun part. I, I had one more business thing that you jumped in, man. Uh, you didn't okay. even know this. Sabian is actually having a clinic over at Pitbull, a big one where they're actually going to come out and, and make symbols right there in the parking lot of Pitbull Audio. Really? Nice. 
Yeah, so you're, we, I got to talk to you about it. We just, we just got that news yesterday. So, um, yeah, it's 23 years I've been with that company and 27 years with LP. So, thanks, guys, for the support and everything else. So, let's get back. Tino, go ahead and just tell everybody how so we can sit there and hang out in the front porch of Matt and stalk him. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, you know, with with Matt, you guys got to go out and check him out on tour. You got to, you know, I haven't seen you live, man. When are you coming to San, to Southern California, brother? We yes. got we got to get out to see your. See, I did something there last December. Um, were you here with Javier? Uh, did you come to? No, I was there with Megan Hilty. Okay. Uh, well, tell our brother it, next it, time, it, man. <laughs> yes, I for sure will. Um, I'll be back. I'm I'm planning on some kind of CD release. Okay. Um, at some point, uh, I'll make a trip out there. I might do a West Coast thing. There's talk about a tour in October, an up and down the the uh, West Coast thing. I'll let you know for sure. Yeah, let me know. There, we might be able to help. We work with a couple of clubs, so. Uh, Amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, you know, Absolutely. obviously, you got websites, Facebook, all that stuff. Can you give us yeah. uh, all that pertinent information? Yeah, it's all either slash or at Matt Cuson, M A T T C U S S O N. Wherever you uh, Facebook uh, slash Matt Cuson, Twitter at Matt Cuson, Instagram at Matt Cuson. Uh, the album will be out uh, Friday all over, uh, you know, iTunes. Um, Amazon, Spotify, wherever you listen to music and all that. And, uh, yeah, I think that's everything. Yeah. Well, hey, awesome. And, uh, you know, make sure you guys check out that, that, that album project. Only Human, like I said, it is funky. It's a hit, man. I, I see that I song. As, as, as hits can be in this day and age, it's kind of weird and how things can happen. Uh, are, right. and, and, and I don't know. Are you still – are you distributing this one through Spectra or how's that working? No, this is through uh, – I'm just i doing this one on my own. It's okay. all me on okay. this one, yeah. Okay, I Good wasn't sure. You. If, I wasn't sure if you're uh, doing that with Spectra or not, and uh, you know, no. I knew those guys over there at some, you know, at some point. But uh, yeah, man, yeah. I'm really proud of everything you're doing, brother. And uh, you know, like I, said, I appreciate it, man. And I, thanks to you guys for everything. I think the first time we connected up was when we did that project. It was 2004 or five with Michelle. Um, oh man, when to change? If you remember that one. Oh my God, that was yeah, that was forever. <laughs> I just played keys on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that's incredible. So you know, uh, um, it was an incredible keyboard playing. That was a, uh, but you got songwriting credit because you you did some really cool uh, progression changes to what I did. Because I'm 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 I, I hate hiring me as a keyboard player. I'm terrible. <laughs> I'm <laughs> I didn't even know you. that. Uh, so thank you. Yeah, yeah. So I'm glad you I'm glad I'll, you came I'll in. I'll wait for that check to come in the mail. Yeah, I don't think there that you actually, go. I don't know if it, I don't know <laughs> if it made it to the charts though. But uh, it was a That's fun all right. track. That's all right. It's time. It was a fun track. <laughs> I'm glad Michelle picked you because. Uh, she always told me about this amazing keyboard producer that she wanted to work with. And, uh, oh, that's awesome. Small world. I have to give a shout out to her and let her know that, uh, we mentioned her on this. this. I don't know Absolutely. if she's doing music now, but, uh, you know, good, good talent. Absolutely. I agree. Well, Mr. Jackie, I'm pass it back to you. And, uh, you know, definitely you you're doing brother. a great job with my brother. I'm glad people here on Facebook are tuning in. And, uh, and I give, I'll give a shout out to Paul and, uh, to, to Cedric here making this happen last minute. We, yes. I didn't know this was going to be a, a Facebook live. I, I came in. You know, around twelve twenty, twelve fifteen, I had uh, had a meeting today, and uh, they're like, "We're on Facebook Live." Like, oh man, we gotta we gotta make sure that we get all this uh, this out to everybody because uh, we want everyone mm-hmm. to to see what's going on. So, thank God I put clothes on for this man. Yeah, I know you don't usually wear clothes <laughs> for these interviews, so we're exactly. all exactly we're all thankful, Jack. I'm glad I'm wearing clothes too because I usually run around here crazy. At the I'm just joking. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, gentlemen, have Thanks a good rest of the interview. Thanks, brother boy. Hey, Matthew, let me ask you this question, brother. Um, mm-hmm. I, I just I had the pleasure of, uh, of thanking my sponsors. You know, does Matthew have anybody he wants to thank that uh, that you're endorsing? Or um, talk to me about that situation and say hi to him if there's anybody out there. there man, the only people I got to thank are the, the people that waited forever for this thing to come out. And my family and my wife and my friends and the band. And, uh, yeah, that that's the biggest thank you to me. Amen, man. Couldn't have done it without you know, and, him. Yeah. You know, you, you, the, the support is everything, and support group itself. You know, we, oh, we, yeah. we talked earlier, and we, we said the word music and business. I Actually, I said the word music and business should never share the same sentence because sure. it's an evil business, man. It's an evil bunch of people out there um, mm-hmm. and uh, and so on. You know, the fact of hopefully that we'll get back to the way things were, you know, um, right. uh, record sales, um, you know, so mm-hmm. – we, we we can actually sit back and you know, enjoy the fruits of our labors for stuff that we did in the studio and for those listeners yep. out there. But until yep. that thing cha- that time changes, Matthew, to the you know you're at that cusp, you're at that mid age uh, of my interviewees. <clears throat> what is your professional opinion? And share it with the listeners out there. What do you feel 
that the business in its uh, current state, do you think it's going to be a negative or do you think it's going to be a positive? Um, we touched on it. Is the glass half empty? Is the glass mm-hmm. half full? What do you feel about it? I think, you know, it's it's obviously tough to make a, a lot of money doing it these days for a lot of people. And I think that's a real negative. And, and you know, the, the, with with just, you know, the arts getting out of schools and stuff, it's just a terrible, right. terrible thing. But like I said before, the one thing I think it's doing is giving so many people a voice. And, and a lot of people are much better than I am taking advantage of the YouTubes and the, and the stuff like that. The great thing about the way it is today is I could, when we get off the phone, go play my piano and sing a song and get it on iTunes mm-hmm. by tomorrow. It could be out to, to everybody who wants to hear it, everybody who wants to buy it. Um, I think that's a, that's a very cool thing is that a lot, like just, you know, the, the, the underground person that wouldn't normally get, get a, get a, get an album out or whatever is now being able to do that. And that's pretty fantastic. The hard thing is now, you know, doing that blue collar stuff, going, going, traveling six hours to play for four people and, and that whole thing. It's, it's, you got to It's a hard work and it's really hard work. But if, uh, if you can sustain it and love it while you're doing it, then you're going to be successful. And that's a great point because I also want to tell Simon, because again, you being in your age bracket that you're in, what do you feel that's kept you relevant at this point that you've done that you would want to share with the younger listeners out there that what's kept you going other than drive? Um, well, one, the love for it, um, without question, I, you know, I do it, I do it to stay alive. I put out music, so I don't do anything stupid. Uh, I think, um, constant getting better at what you do is very important because I have a lot of friends that have stayed the same. Uh, they, 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 they just, they don't practice. They don't learn new things. They don't, and, and their careers kind of stayed the same, but, um, you know, when I got asked to play piano for Megan Hilty, I was I, I was very scared to play Broadway stuff because a lot of that stuff is is really complex stuff. Right. And I said, you know what, I'm going to sit down for the next six months. I'm going to only play Broadway music and I'm going to figure out, you know, because I don't read music at all, but I can hear right. it and play it. So I would listen to different piano players play the same thing and I would just kind of. I dove straight in. And now I love playing that style of music, especially when she's singing it because she's unbelievable. So, um, you know, I think continual getting better at your craft, opening ideas to new things. You gotta, I've been bad at it, uh, but I am going to put out a volume is, is important these days, more and more music to put out more and mm-hmm. more things for people to watch, to listen to, uh, you know, it, it's, it's that and collaborating with everyone playing everywhere, whether it's Madison square or Starbucks, it's just, mm-hmm. I think it's just always being seen, heard networking, uh, whatever it takes. You know, and that's what it's all about here on Jackie's Groove. You know, it's a it's a conversation between two brothers or a brother and a sister musicians. Questions that aren't usually brought up or asked about. And because the interviewer is not a musician, he's not a road dog like you and I have been and so on. And, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I appreciate, again, I don't want to use the word emerging artists. I think you've already put your thumbprint in the industry. I think it is that with, mm-hmm. with radio interviews like ourselves and other people out there, is to bring you to the mm-hmm. forefront, to bring you to life. Social media is a great, great help all the way around. Yeah, it as is. much as it we is. don't want the, we don't want to deal with the politics and the bullshit of Instagram and right. and uh, right. YouTube and so on and so forth. We try to fly under the radar to a certain level, but we're here to do everything. Absolutely. And as Florentino said it before, when you, when you make your pilgrimage back out to the West Coast, please allow us to be um, successful as we've been with Al Demiola um, on his last oh, yeah. tour and uh, and other associates. And we do have great venues to place you in. So. If you will allow us to um, ex- extend our name to Matt Cousin, we greatly appreciate it. So, with that said, you guys, two hours, man, it's over. It's 52 seconds left. And I want to tell yeah, everybody by. out there worldwide, listen, this coming Friday, the 5th of May, go out and purchase this new release of great songs, 14, Mr. Matt yeah. Cousin and, a, and an album called Only Human. You guys were only human also, man, but we've got to step out. We want to thank everybody for your support. And again, I stress this, overdose on this man's music. It mm-hmm. is amazing. I, it, doesn't get, it doesn't get any better than this, man, And because there's just so much fucking shit that is yeah. on the radio, man. And, you know, and I'm not going to get on my soapbox itself. So, you know, as I say with all of my interviews, Matt, thank you so much for gracing my show, gracing the network. And as everybody, um, you know, again, go out and stalk this man, spend some music on it. Matt. God bless, Godspeed, best of health to you and your beautiful bride. 
Thank you for Same making this you guys, man. possible on Jackie's Group. As I always Can't say, everybody thank else, enough, thank you for t- Dan, thank you for tuning in. Matthew, you're more than welcome. And as I always say in finishing, everybody, peace through music. God bless, guys. This is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Brew. Come join me weekly on my journey through the music business as I take you behind the velvet rope, interviewing industry notables such as Al Dimiola, Michael McDonald, and Al Jarreau, to name but a few. Listen to their stories on being in the studios recording number one hits and onto the stages throughout the globe. Allow me to be your music historian. You can hear me live every Monday at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time or 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com. Ready to get your groove on? Hi, this is Tim Dolbear from Eclectica Studios. I'm a full-time mixing and recording engineer. I work with Grammy winners, labels, and indie artists. Using state-of-the-art digital mixing and restoration tools and the very best in analog gear. Really, though, it's my ability to bring tracks to life and fulfill your vision for your music. This has made me sought after by producers and artists worldwide. So spend your time working on music and not chasing a mix down a rabbit hole. Go to timdolbear.com and check out our free one-song mix offer. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on Intertalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com.